Far Beyond the Void is an original Dungeons & Dragons actual play live stream and is recommended for mature audiences. It may contain descriptions of graphic violence, coarse language, horror themes, supernatural themes, terribly lame jokes and more fun stuff. This is episode one of Far Beyond the Void. Um, for those people who are joining us for the very first time, either you're watching on Twitch or you're watching back on YouTube, or maybe you're listening back to the podcast, I feel like a little bit of an explanation is in order. So, um, first of all, welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Sven. I am the Dungeon Master for this particular adventure. Um, now, what is Far Beyond the Void? I hear you ask, uh, Froth. Well, Thanks for asking. Let me tell you, Far Beyond the Void is an original Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition Spelljammer actual play livestream. And that is a hell of a mouthful that I got through without, yeah. without tripping up. Um, of course, we stream this on Twitch um, every week at Saturday, Saturday 8pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Let me just turn that music down a little bit so it's not deafening everyone. I feel like it's a little bit too loud. And of course, once we've done the live stream, I upload it to YouTube as well as the podcast version, which you might be listening to right now. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, hey, this isn't uh, as good a production quality as the podcast that I usually listen to, first of all, screw you. Second of all, it's a live stream. So you're getting Dungeons & Dragons as Dungeons & Dragons usually is played. Now, live in person. Yeah. Damn you. Don't judge me. Yeah. Um, that second. being said, I've only actually met one of the other people on screen right now in person. Yeah, and he's uh, he's a lot taller than he looks on camera. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't no, know any of these You're just a lot shorter people. than you look on camera. <laughs> Except for Ali. I know Ali. Ali is you. my friend. I apologize. <laughs> I think what you meant to say is I don't know these people as well as I would like. Is that right, Grace? Yes, yeah. that is better. Except for Ali, who is still a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not anymore. <laughs> you just dug yourself in even deeper. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Oh yes, of course, Far Beyond the Void. Um, Far Beyond the Void picks up the story where we left off from last year with Out of the Abyss. So if you're listening to this, this is the first episode you're listening to, that's fine. You can keep listening or watching from this point onwards and you will have a complete story to listen to or to watch. Um, absolutely no dramas. But if you want a little bit of extra content, then go back and, uh, and listen to or watch Out of the Abyss. We have all the same players. We have all the same characters. So nothing changes, just the setting. Speaking of, uh, of players, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. People um who are watching or listening for the first time know what they're watching or listening to so who would like to go first um what i need here is i want you to introduce yourself um say your character's name and class and maybe include something um about your character's personality I feel like we should roll for it. Leave the description to later. Okay, you want to do a roll? Let's do a roll off. Sure. Everybody roll me a d20. D20. Tell me what you get. I can do that. I can roll a d20. Can I? Yes, I can do that. Two. I got a two. Uh, 18. Looks like I'm going first. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, you are not. <laughs> All right. Uh, what did Marina get? I can't see that. 19. 19. All right. I didn't want to go first. So we're going. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alicia, Dran Ballas, or, or Froth, sorry. Um, then Grace, and then Patch. Yeah, sorry. I get these names mixed up because I don't see you as actual people anymore. I see you as characters. Um, I see. This is the way. Indisposable. Um, sorry, me. Except, uh, you were indisposable before, but now I've got um, original character art made up for you guys. You're not indisposable anymore. But if, yeah. if you think, <laughs> even for a second... No, no, now, now we are indisposable before we were disposable. Yeah, oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, now you are disposable. Yeah. Uh, now you are indisposable. But if you think even yeah. for a second that's going to keep you from being uh, murdered in a TPK, think again. Anyway, 
Alicia, would you like to introduce yourself to our Hi. Friends? I'm Mally, or Alicia, if you want to call me by my full name. It's very professional. Mm -hmm. um, but I play uh, Verena Whitlock, Lady Verena Whitlock, I should say. She'd be very offended. Um, she is an artificer, a battlesmith artificer, with her little companion gadget. When I say little, he's medium-sized category, so not the little. Um, but she is probably the party's face, as like as much as she'd like to think she is. Um, and she probably considers herself a bit of the brain as well. Um, but that... she she spends all her time uh, calculating everyone's deaths in. The nicest way possible. Calculating everyone's death in the nicest way possible. Um, yes. Walk us through. How do you calculate someone's death in a nice way? Yeah. Well, you gotta, like, do it behind the scenes so that the person you're planning to murder doesn't realize that you're planning to murder them. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that just in character, or do you do that as well as a player? Um, I think a bit of both. A bit of both. All yeah, right. it kind of depends on what happens in game. Um, yeah, well, I mean, who takes over. I'm mostly um, focusing on other things, so I can't really keep too much attention on your actual <laughs> camera feed. So, if someone sees a death stare from Ali, please, uh, please let me know. Anyway. I just keep seeing Grace disappear and reappear again. Yeah, I know, I know it's driving me insane. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, we live in not the most uh, technologically advanced city on the world. Um, so, Wakanda, this is not. Um, we make our <laughs> internet cry. sticks and rocks. So, if Grace is having a little bit of technical difficulties and jumping in and out, you know, you know, we'll just make it work. Um, Be is, kind. Yeah, it's a crit and miss stream. What can I say? If you want uh, technical brilliance... Um, you know, go somewhere else. It's all about the presentation here. And I've got to say, the presentation is looking quite nice tonight. Speaking of nice presentation, Froth! G'day, how are you? My name's Froth. I'm from Froth's Minis. Um, I paint D&D miniatures and play D&D and just a bit of an all-round geek of uh, I'm playing the character Dranbalas, uh, level 5 Dragonborn. Um, he's a le three levels of wizard in the Order of the Scribes and uh, two levels of Cleric in the Tempest domain. All right. And, and I'm currently um, taking some notes that he needs to watch his back and I'll pass that to him in game out of concern from Alicia's most recent comments. Yeah. Um, please use your sending stones and send him a telepathic message to, uh, to let him know. And I feel like um, between all the other characters, Verena, Drone Ballas is probably closest with Verena, so... I don't know if that's, mm -hmm. a, yeah. if that's a good thing or a bad thing for him. Well, he met, met Verena before he met the rest of the other party. Yep. Um, but uh, are, we, are we talking about personalities now? Is that what we're doing? Or we're we going to save that for a little bit? No, no, no. Uh, give, us a, give us a brief, brief personality uh, right. recap. Okay, okay. So um, he's fairly, fairly chaotic, uh, emotionally impulsive, has a burning curiosity for magic. Um, and the gods, which fuels his adventurous nature. Um, through his backstory, um, he's sort of developed because of his history. Uh, he sort of bears himself with an air of arrogance. Um, and yeah, that's a lot of what he's about. Um, he's had a couple of traumatic things happen in his past and a couple of boring things and bits and pieces, but that's what leads to these uh, personality traits of his. And I'll try to find as best as I can for you all at home. Well, um, Froth is going to be starting with inspiration today because he's the only player I've ever had who's made a personality matrix for one of their characters. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and make yourself that uh, that point of inspiration because that's... Uh, I mean, that. that's, a, <laughs> that's more preparation than I would ever do um, for any of my games. So maybe you should cool. be DMing. Should we just switch real quick? Welcome to Crit and Miss. 
You've got the I voice for it too. Um, <laughs> those people who are listening to the Spotify version, you might actually recognize uh, Frost's voice as the, uh, the 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 voice who does the um, what's it, not the introduction, the what's it called? The disclaimer. The disclaimer. The disclaimer. The disclaimer. That's right. You yeah. might uh, you might recognize Froth's um, radio smooth voice as the uh, the voice who says the disclaimer for Far Beyond the Void. But we might even add some new ones later on. So who knows? But well, well, I couldn't get the good look, so I was blessed with the voice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is so mean. I don't know. You you float some people's uh, some people's boats, Froth. Don't uh, don't count yourself down. Those glasses, it's a good look. Um, I mean, aren't you married, Froth? I am. Yes. Yeah. So so like you you are obviously good enough for someone. <laughs> like, like, come on! Don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Much time has passed. <laughs> What's your email blow up now that uh, episode one of Barbie on the Void has premiered <laughs> with um, uh, solicitations? You love my face and voice. Hit the locks. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Um, Grace. Hi, everyone. Um, I have to apologize. My gaming setup is a little bit different. I am off site today because I have horrible internet, which is a running theme. If you have watched Out of the Abyss, you would know that my internet is very subpar, like less than subpar. Subpar is generous. Anyway, I play Thrash the Troublesome. Crit and miss is best and only barbarian as far as I'm concerned. Thrash is a tabaxi. Um, she's Excuse super me? super badass. You heard me. Um, she is very badass. She's very scary, and she's just here to cause some trouble. Because that's her name. All right, and now, could you talk about Thrasher's personality? <laughs> that was Thrasher's oh. personality. Right. That was still talking about you. Okay. Um, all right, awesome. Um, <laughs> cool. Um... Mark, dig me out of this hole, buddy. Introduce yourself. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Hey guys, I'm Mark Hillman, uh, local musician, sound engineer, and uh, cast member on Far Beyond the Void. Now I, I almost said out of the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. Um, Too soon. Yeah, I was uh, quite stoked to join the join the cast of Out of the Abyss when that kicked off, and glad to keep going. It's it's been a lot of fun, really great journey so far. I sometimes also DM other stuff on the channel. We have another stream coming up soon that we'll be launching on the 19th called Forces of Nature. I'll be running that one. That will be fun. Um, tonight, I'll be Thatch. He is a Furbolg uh, Druid Cleric Barbarian, despite uh, Thrash's opinion that she's the only Barbarian in the party. She's actually had quite an impact on Patch in the, in the time he's been around. Um, they they like spent a bit of time together alone before they met uh, Drambalus and Lady Verena, and she uh, her more violent tendencies kind of rubbed off on Patch a little bit. Which is interesting because he was a pacifist mm. when he first joined the group That's right. and um, had a few experiences that led to his illusions of that being possible, being kind of shattered, including killing... Apologize a... for absolutely sort of... nothing. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, patches are two levels of uh, Star Druid, uh, Circle of Stars, two levels of Twilight Cleric and one level of Barbarian. At this so what time. are we working on, Drew Claire Barber? Yeah, yeah, I just I gave know. up. Uh, I'm not doing that yeah, anymore. Just, <laughs> Claire Barber, Drew. Patch. Like you, you know, you know how his his cloak is like it's 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 one one bit of main material and then all these other little patches. It's kind of like his class as well. You know, it's like it's a bit like that. Um, he's pretty happy go lucky most of the time, except with all the recent stuff going on and having had to. Uh, a little bit violent and tapping into his inner rage and slicing one of those oh what were they called again those abyssal murphys no he's but after a that jolly good marrow yeah the marrows um he, you know like he cleaved one of those with with thrash's axe and got a bit angry and and then they had to fight this though. dragon and and now they've got this this ship there and his pet dog's been left behind in the underdark but the ship's got a nice tree in the middle of it that seems to be alive so he's kind of patches a bit all over the shop at the moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he doesn't know what he doesn't know what to, what, what to do two things people love in dungeons and dragons pacifists and splitting the party yeah so no it's good uh it's nice to see that kind of attention um to how characters 
like progress and react to the way um, the events fold out around them and how they react to their environment. I think everyone's character here has gone through some kind of um, metamorphosis, for lack of a better term. Um, yep. They've changed the, their outlook on life based on how hostile the Underdark has been. So, uh, more so for the players who have been around for a little bit longer. Uh, but for the other two, you know, I'm, I'll am i get you guys too. Don't worry. <laughs> We're already starting. He's still lying. He Verena, Verena's been yeah, finding a, a passion for... Um, thrash, apparently. You, well, thrash, but I was, I was going <laughs> to say for catfishing people. <laughs> yeah. Be a bit that literally. would be accurate. Hmm. She, <laughs> so, Maybe she's catfishing thrash. Yeah, who knows? Maybe. Who who knows? Time will tell. And uh, time is what we have plenty of. That's why I'm stalling for so long, because I'm too nervous to actually start running the game. Oh. But um, oh, that's, our, uh, that's our players. That's the characters they're going to be playing tonight. Um, and for the, rest of this, uh, for the rest of this year, hopefully. Hopefully, uh, Far Beyond the Void goes for uh, at least a year. Oh, I, th I think the stream will be going for that long. I don't know if we'll be playing these characters for that long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the stream has Thrash longevity. Thrash is living forever. Yeah, yeah. Your characters do not. Um, to be fair, I'm the only one that's actually had a character die in this campaign. Yeah, that is Yeah, fair. I've, I've survived the this entire time. Times. Yeah, but gadgets... I have every not intention of, feelings. of killing the rest of you. We'll get to that. This is far beyond the void. The gloves are off. Out of the abyss is over. There's no more padding for you guys to, yeah. to fall on. Um, so not, not, not to hurt Gadget's feelings. I think Gadget's amazing, but like when you can bring Gadget back after a long rest, Gadget dying is it kind of is the same as one of us of? dying. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's, I agree. Also you remember you what do. I was saying before about the murder? Do we want to examine Patch's mortality? Yeah. You can try. Yeah, I would like I to examine Patch's mortality. <laughs> Certainly try. You wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> There's <laughs> no way. Um, <laughs> you, you wouldn't. <laughs> so, uh, for those people who are new to the channel, or even if you have listened to Out of the Abyss, um, <laughs> this episode tonight is going to simultaneously act as both a prologue for Far Beyond the Void and an epilogue for Out of the Abyss. So, this is the changing over point. Um, for those people who listen to the RSS version, um, there will be a link to the new RSS in the description for this episode in Out of the Abyss uh, for Far Beyond the Void. And there will be a new playlist on YouTube that will be easy for anyone to find. Uh, for those people who are watching on Twitch, nothing changes. So, nothing to worry about there. Um, a couple of other things, a couple of housekeeping things we have to go over before we actually start the game. Bear with me, guys. We'll actually start playing pretty soon. Um, for 2023, um, Crit and Miss is very proud to announce that uh, we have partnered up with both Hermes D&D Services and Evan Winston from drawingsanddragons.com. Uh, yeah. Our, our new affiliate partners. What does that mean for you guys? Well, very simple. If you subscribe to uh, Crit and Miss Role Playing Games on Twitch, you type in the command exclamation mark discard into the chat right now, you will get a discount code for Hermes D&D Services and for drawingsanddragons.com. You will get 10% off all of goods and services at hermesdnd.com.au uh, and 15% off art commissions uh, from Evan Winston. Just head over to drawingsanddragons.com. It has all of his contact details over there. There we go. And uh, I think that nice. pretty much covers everything. Um, we do have a couple of house rules for those people who are watching or listening, haven't listened to one of our streams before. Um, I didn't write this down, I probably should have, so I'm gonna forget a few, but a couple of house rules that we like to play with, or that I like to play with. Um, we use an optional flanking rule, but instead of giving advantage, flanking uh, with an ally uh, will give you a plus two to your two hit. 
all right um, instead of advantage I just like doing it that way it balances things out uh, a little bit nicer while still giving a little bit of incentive for people to tactically position themselves around the battlefield um, the other one is when you are either attacking with a reach weapon or firing a ranged weapon making a ranged attack whether that be a ranged spell attack or a ranged weapon attack um, you will suffer a minus two a cumulative penalty to your two hits only up to a minus four so if you're shooting through one ally space you take a minus two to your two hit if you're shooting through two ally spaces or more you will suffer a minus four penalty to your two hit um, the other one that I am a bit wishy-washy about. Do you expand that to include reach weapons, or has it always done that? No, it's always been reach weapons. This is we never really, okay. never really used it. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I also like to use um, just a, a a little bit of a system when we're doing skill checks. Uh, what I like to do is apply uh, complications to skill checks that fail by five or more, as well as the opposite of that for skill checks that succeed by five or more so if they fail by five or more they'll get a bit of a complication in, in to what's happening um, and if they succeed by five or more they might get something a little bit extra whatever that is that's up to the DM's discretion um, and on top of that should they fail a skill check they can then choose to push that skill check uh, but what they need to do is first describe what they're doing differently and second, whether they, uh, doesn't matter how much they fail by, if they fail, there will be a complication. So they have to use that with, you know, um, they have to really think about it. We'll put it that way, because the complications can range from anything from you lose a, a lockpick to a, a dragon immediately and irrevocably eats um, patch. So could be anything, DM's discretion. Um, no. And on that note, um, for those people who are D&D 5th edition rules purists, I'm sorry, I don't want to alienate anyone, but this is probably not uh, not going to be the stream that you're going to be wanting <laughs> to listen to. Because I like to play a little bit fast and loose. Rule of cool, rule of fun is always the most important thing here. And uh, one thing that we've sort of um, adopted is I quite often allow players to get away with a little bit extra if they give me their inspiration not naming any names to... finger pointing to... yeah. gets <laughs> finger I'm pointing absolutely gets nothing to say <laughs> i um I, I just like to say to all of those those people who like to be rules nazis that you need to remember the golden rule i mean i remember reading this in the third edition book in high school it's in a three way that... no that's a different book um <laughs> yeah no, um, no. The, the the DM is God. Your the DM's word is law. That means whatever rules the DM decides to put in place are the rules. They're not home. The DM not, gets plus one hundred. They are to the rules for that game because the DM is the rule maker. The book is just a guide, and it's written in the bloody book that that's the case. Yeah, that is true. Go, that is true. No, 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 the rules. Are just... The rules are just a guide, man. The book itself says so. And as if much as I rules like, written, rules is written. That's what it says. <laughs> as much as I like being compared to a deity, um, I will say, of course, that I, I always I want my players' input as well. If I say something that is wildly unfair, I will always listen to what the players have to say, and then shut them down immediately and irrevocably. <laughs> but I always listen. That. So, I think that's fair. Um, and one more thing before we get started, if you're watching live on Twitch, which is the best way to consume this particular content, um, you can redeem Quitcoin. What's that do? Well, let me tell you, we have the card system in place. And what that means is if you are watching, you can redeem those Quitcoin to buy cards for the players or myself as the DM to use at their discretion. Now, what can you buy? Um, you can buy health potions for the players. Um, you can buy... Uh, advantage for the players you can buy <laughs> bless for the players which will give them 1d4 to any check that they make um, you can buy wild magic surge cards which seem to be wildly popular yes they are 
Um, so I've, I've well, reduced son, those. Everyone but me, so I love those. I love those. Those are the best. Yeah, I've reduced um, those down to three, by the way. I've, um, Sven was talking about custom wild magic surges, mm -hmm. and um, I no. think I put one in that, oh no, it's, it's, I think there should be a chance of triggering it while, triggering some while raging, but that's a particular barbarian thing. But no, that, there's one that actually, like, instead of triggering um, a magic surge, it triggers rage. <laughs> I like it. Have we still one. got the moonbeam one on there? Should we... Where you get moonbeamed? Should we get a little bit more of... A little bit more feedback? We, I will look at reinstituting that whole system again, where um, people can submit wild magic surge cards to us. But bear with us, because it's difficult. But you know, we'll get there. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh yes, you can also redeem a natural twenty for the players to use, and you can redeem a natural twenty for myself to use. Now we can only have one of those on the table at all times. Unless I feel like I deserve an extra natural 20, in which case, you can, uh, I'll just allow you to buy me another one. But there's restrictions normally in place with uh, how much you can sort of redeem those. So, yeah. Um, anything else? Does it, anyone wants to add? Did I forget something? Yeah, don't give Grace Moonbeam. Yeah. George yeah. says so. Yeah, that's yeah, but right, um, but, but, Cozy but, but, Cottage but, Gaming also says yes. Give her Moonbeam, and that it's definitely not Grace. But so, Grace, you um... always you always have Grace Beam. Remember? <laughs> oh, Thrash already has. That's a good point, Verena. That's a good point. Shut up, Ali. No one asked your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if we have to ask um, Aaron Richard to draw another set of ears on top of those ears i will absolutely do that yeah 100 oh my god that, that, that would doing be grace thing yeah. speaking of which i should point out for those people who are watching um the character art that you can see uh up on screen right now as well as the ones that i shared earlier on instagram and facebook all done by our good yeah. friends uh and amazing dm friend of the show aaron richard um you may know him as uh at D D Valiant Odyssey from the Valiant Odyssey podcast. He is the DM yeah. for the Valiant Odyssey. He's a cool guy, supporter of the show, and um, if you want character art like this made up, I think he still has a few spots open right now for commissions. So send him through a message and you can get character art made like this. And I've got to say, he's, uh, he's outdone himself with these ones. These are, are amazing. Yes, we love it's them. Awesome. So cool. Really great job. All right, anything else? Or shall we start playing some Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, Please, sir, be can we cool. play Dungeons and Dragons? All right. More? I'll allow it. Thank you. Yay. Do I have to give you my inspiration? You do. <laughs> but... And Mark's inspiration, too. I don't have Oh, any. yeah, I'm chill. All right. Well, you own yeah, Minus sure. inspirations. You go into negative inspiration. <laughs> Let's do this. Who's ready? Yep. I am. Good. All right. Always ready. I'm not, but hey. Let's oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. We open up to an idyllic scene. Perhaps too idyllic. As the golden rays of the setting sun reflect off the snow-capped peaks that encompass a quaint farming village, the birds sing their twilight songs as we pan across to see a majestic oak tree. From its outstretched branches hangs an array of glass baubles that gently sway in the breeze, catching the light of the setting sun and casting a dazzling rainbow of colours that dance playfully across the town centre. We focus on one of those glass spheres as it swings and twirls in the wind and we zoom in. As we get closer, tiny imperfections in the crystal ball come into focus. And with the light of the setting sun, it gives the distinct illusion of a tiny galaxy caught in the never-ending push and pull of cosmic forces. We continue to zoom in, and each one of those little lights starts to take a luminescence 
all of their own. And just as we are about to make contact with the outer edges of this tiny crystal bauble, our perspective briefly shimmers and waves, as if we're passing through its glass exterior. And we find ourselves gazing into the never-ending expanse of space, greeted by millions of twinkling stars. In a space among those stars, a small purple light grows brighter and brighter as we approach an asteroid alone in the emptiness of the void. As we draw ever closer to that scene, we see upon the asteroid a circle of stones surrounded by a platform flanked by a pair of braziers that cast an eerie purple glow. As we pan across, we see the light from those ethereal flames glitter and reflect off the scales of what was, until recently, the Void Dragon, Scar of the Beyond, now laying in a heap upon the cold stone surface of the asteroid. Kneeling beside its corpse, we see a figure. Mark, what do we see? Well, you see a tall, somewhat top-heavy furbolg, uh, grey-green, pale skin, with a slightly pointed ears with tufts of fur coming out, rich oaken brown hair that falls to his shoulders. He's like kneeling over the thing. His uh, his cloak is wrapped around him. It's it's dark coloured, but it's like got vibrant coloured patches all over it where where he's stitched up holes. Um, and he, he seems to be quite focused on using some tools to work at parts of the dragon. He's uh, you know, trying to get a tooth and some scales and, and some hide and whatnot. Um, he's got like bushy eyebrows and, and, and they flare slightly at the arches and then his brows furrowed in concentration as his golden eyes sort of like peer upon the work he's doing. Um, he's got bold features, a broad nose, high cheekbone. Um, and if you were to catch a glimpse beneath his, uh, his cloak, you would see a breastplate that's made from uh, like segments of chitinous carapace and harvested bone, strengthened and polished with various materials he's harvested from plants and stuff. It's got a very, it's not shiny like a breastplate, and normally be, it's very dull, but it looks rigid and solid. Um, yeah, he's, he's got a, got a warhammer on one hip, uh, mace on the other, a shield on his back, and he's just very focused on, on doing this stuff and not really paying much attention to anything else at the moment. So, while Patch is digging into the corpse of this void dragon, he's cutting away at the scales. Um, you can hear the sounds uh, of sawing as he attempts to cut the scales away and dig deeper into the, uh, into the actual body. Um, who wants to uh, who wants to introduce their character next? It can go. Grace, what is Thrash doing while uh, while Patch is trying to harvest the body parts from this dragon? So Thrash has sort of made her way over to the front of the dragon, um, and Thrash is a seven foot tall tabaxi. She has this mane of just untamed curly brown hair sort of like merida from brave but super fluffy um she's sort of like cream colored and she's got those little polka dots everywhere like any other tabaxi leopard would um as she's sort of looking at the maw of this dragon her tail is just flicking back and forth and you can tell this is the most exciting thing that she's seen in a very long time and she sort of like grabs this dragon by the top of one of its teeth and attempts to like push up and open its jaw and once she figures out that she's strong enough to actually get the jaw moving up and down um she sort of turns to Verena and goes hi Verena I was once a big scary dragon but now I'm dead because Thrash killed me isn't she so cool and strong ha 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 and, we and then she across. sort of leans up against the dragon and makes finger guns. <laughs> we, following the direction of your finger guns, the camera pans across and we see Verena. And uh, what's Verena doing? What does Verena look like? Uh, Verena, unfortunate to her, is the shortest member of the party. Um, at just over five foot. Um, she's stood uh, with a 
rigid back, clutching a purple gem in her hand. Um, her gaze is straight on the floor, looking at the dismantled parts of her uh, battlesmith companion. Um, you can almost tell that she's trying to hold herself together as she looks at the uh, defender that she has managed to kill again. And as Thrash speaks to her, she looks up over at her. You can almost see her sniffle as she rolls her eyes and glances between the tabaxi and the portal back the way they came. And standing by the portal is a dragonborn, examining the arcane runes that line its circular surface. What does that dragonborn look like? Yeah, sure. I would say as the um, camera pans across, you'd, you'd come across kind of like a seven foot two, kind of two hundred and eighty pound big boy, about a twenty eight year old looking. Um, Dragonborn, bluish green scales, sort of greenish in the middle to a light blue, almost white on the outer edges of the scales. Uh, in one hand, he's got a, um, a spell book just sort of floating above his hand, or like a tome, and there's a blue quill with a whitish aura that's sort of semi transparent, just writing away, doing all the writing for him. As he's looking at these, a little bat perched on his shoulder that he's sort of stroking as he looks around very intensely and um, uh, this sort of electrical energy coursing sort of between his scales and you can just sort of, sort of see a light glow underneath the, the scales and between the scales sort of coursing around moving around his body into his spell book and back through into his stuff as he moves around and notices Verena rather upset about her companion um, looking across and says mm, you know I may be able to try mending that for you you can bring them back together that's no issue it just is painful to watch it happen time and time again and it's only started happening since you guys came into my life hey, ah. here's an idea um yeah, and you know, I'm just spitballing here. Um, how about you make it stronger? Uh, I mean, if it was less wimpy, then maybe it wouldn't die. Just a suggestion. I don't know. I mean, like, and Patch looks up, uh, looks over his shoulder, still continuing his work. It's, it's not like it's alive or anything. Settle down. Would you rather I kill Bark so you can resurrect him, and then kill him again so you can resurrect him? It's quite the Aren't same emotional attachment. A living creature. So it's not like your guy's actually dying. He's always there. You know you can just go bloop and it's back the next day. It's not speaking like of, guys, it's gone. Speaking of the furball, um what are we gonna go back? Cause I kind of like that dog. Um, well, I was hoping we had the time to do that after I'm done here, yeah. And maybe Jim Jar, too. Well, why Speaking don't I just time, go back and get them? As by my calculations, they have probably paused back in their own time. So, no. what I'll actually do here is I'll get the first two rolls for, uh, for 2023 and for Far Beyond the Void. Let's Ooh. start with an Arcana check from Yaron Ballas. Alright. Wait. Take okay, a little bit of that, time to right. study this shimmering silver portal. Uh, coming right up in one moment. 26. Oh, nice. 26. You know everything bada about bing, this portal. Uh, you know its parents, you know its family lineage. You, know what it you made with. this portal your bitch. <laughs> its nickname is Jeff. Um... <laughs> So yeah, uh, you've had you've had a little bit of time to study Jeff the portal, and uh, what you've discovered is the portal sort of acts as a two-way portal. Now, the portal on this side always remains open, but from the other side, you understand that the portal must be triggered to open up. So you can always travel from this side of the from this side of the portal, from the asteroid upon which you stand, back to the tomb of the Night Warden at any time. 
But you know that once you do so, at some point, once something is triggered, you're not entirely sure what, that portal from the other side will close, which isn't a big problem for you because you already know the sequence from which to open up the portal. So you know that you're not in any great rush because the portal's not going to close from this side. All right. So given that you have a little bit of time, Patch, I'll get a survival check from you. No worries. Incoming. 20. Dirty 20. A dirty 20? Ooh. All right. Yeah, I fair would bit. be focusing on trying to get one tooth and a, and hopefully enough scales and hide to make some semblance of some armor with some work. All right. Um, what I will say is you will get... Roll a... Roll a D12 for me. I'm going to say that you need at least... 10 scales to make a make a piece of armor. I get seven? You get seven. So you're well on your way to, to making a yeah. piece of armor. Now these scales, because they're coming off a void dragon, they're a little bit different than mm -hmm. what you're used to. They sort of have like uh, a, a dark sort of uh, tinge to them, but they're also almost iridescent, reflecting mm. a very dark blue sort of hue um, and one thing that you understand while you're harvesting the scales is this dragon used to be a lunar dragon but was okay. somehow changed and corrupted Interesting. and it's very strange when you touch the scales they're very very smooth smooth to the point where it almost feels like you're getting no response, like you're touching nothing. That's how smooth these scales feel. And if you think back to when the dragon, when you were fighting it, uh, it was like going ethereal back and forth. You yeah, okay. feel like that has something to do with that effect. Uh, you were also trying to get some teeth. Uh, yeah, at least one if I could. Yeah, I'll say you um, can get a tooth, and yes. Can I help? Because I'm at it. Like, I'm already holding it open because I was making wow. silly buggers with the dragon's head. You got a natural <laughs> 20, right? Mark? Hey, no, I got a dirty 20. All right, well, roll again. Roll again for... For survival? Scale. Okay. We're just crit fishing. Yeah. Yep. Hey, who knows? Maybe you roll a natural 20, I'll give you something extra. Seven. No. No, same roll again. <laughs> Dirty 20. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, no. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you, you can harvest a tooth uh, out of this. Um, you do spend a little bit of time. You start, like, digging out one tooth, and for some reason, it's become, like, brittle. Like the bone. So, oh. a couple of them actually break while you're trying okay. to get these teeth out, but you do actually manage to get one. Um... And is that harvest. one brittle as well? Like, um, you would say so, yeah. So you have to be fairly careful yeah, with this but, thing. Something has yeah. happened after the dragon. Not died making a dagger out of that, then. That has caused this to become brittle. But who knows? Maybe it has some type of uh, alchemical component yeah, or something. Cool. Maybe you can yeah. grind it down. Uh, but you also can, if you want to, uh, harvest a couple of vials of the dragon's blood. Now, as oh, you're yes. cutting away the scales and pulling out the teeth. You see some of the blood sort of spill out from where you pulled the tooth and it starts to pull on the icy cold surface on the asteroid upon which you stand and you can see it's very similar to the dragon scales you look down it's almost like it absorbs light yeah right so you can harvest a couple of vials of that if you have vials that is i don't know if you do I have a water skin, and we've got a boat nearby that surely has supplies on it. So I'm gonna, I'll empty my water skin and put it in that. All right. Um, go ahead and add, uh, add that tooth. Add the, what was it? Seven scales, seven void dragon scales, and um, a water skin of yep. void dragon blood to your inventory. Now I guess I'll just put a note on my water skin that says it contains void dragon blood. Um, and yes, otherwise I have the other things added. We are blood scale with the tooth. 
but it takes a fair bit of time to do all of this. So while that's happening, um, Verena and Dranvalis, what do you want to do? Ladies first. I I guess I'm gathering up as many pieces of gadget as possible, putting them in the uh, little compartments and uh, bags I have to try and keep as much of this gadget as possible. Um, and then I will wander my way over to the portal, kind of sizing it up, contemplating the pros and cons of staying on either side. So, the stars surround you, and I must, it must feel like disorienting to be standing on this asteroid surrounded by a field of stars, and in front of you there's this circular um, construction, a portal, it stands about 15 feet high, something like that, and then the center of this circle is filled with this shimmering silver energy that pulsates and glows. And Drone Ballas and Verena, I imagine you're walking towards this portal and the light sort of reflects from Drone Ballas' scales as you approach this portal. She's going to turn to Drone Ballas, kind of look between him and the portal and back at him and say, what would you do? I'm not sure that I am the best person to ask this one. Uh, I mean, your second to best intellect among us, so I guess I have to accept your opinion. It's not my intelligence that drives my choices, but my passions and my goals after meeting a hero which I thought I would never meet, and then to see what has happened and befall in front of us, then my quest will now be to push on with his adventures and journeys and goals. So uh, I am driven by that and I'm sure perhaps maybe yourself may have a a different different alignment. Uh, but while he's talking about this, his bat sort of flown off and he's hovering around and he reaches for his staff behind him, sort of drawing it out. And as he does, there's like a like a blue orb stuck in the mouth of the head of the staff. The head of the staff is like a small dragon's head and it starts to glow. Um, and Lady Verena, you would feel the pieces of gadget starting to um, sort of try to move together as we're saying this, but I'd say, whilst that's happening, I'd say, um, and he's casting Mending, by the way, for the for the audio viewers at home, um, and he'd be saying, uh, with the portal, I can see that it's, uh, from this side, we can go through at any time, but from the other side, it needs to be activated. And I believe you know how, but the choice now is yours. However, I feel like I may finally be starting to find some companions which is very different from the lonely upbringing i had in the temple of koreska and those final going... words of kukulain must be just playing back over and over again in dramalis's mm -hmm. head it sucks to be a hero as he died alone on an asteroid surrounded by strangers I feel so sorry for him. That's a horrible way to die. <laughs> She's going to face Dranbalas and kind of lift up the the crystal, the the last remaining uh, piece of Kukulain, I guess, and look at uh, Dranbalas in the eyes and say, "I'm familiar with trying to steal someone's legacy." I can't imagine how it must feel being so new to it. Hmm. Alas, I'm not much, I'm not sure much myself, but I guess we'll find where the journey takes us. I'm sure we will. I mean, with our brains and their 
um, whatever they contribute, then we will never fail, I'm sure. Hmm. I believe there are still the matters of uh, finding Charles Radana. Um, but hopefully we may be able to perhaps somehow make contact with the gift first. Of course. And if you're all set on staying on this side of the portal, as much as I mildly protest, I will lend a hand or four when we get that ship we were promised. Patronage will be always greatly appreciated, Lady Verena. And I too await sure. this ship. Can we see any ships around us? Yes, actually I don't need a I don't need a perception check or anything like this. You can see uh, far off now in the distance the what I described to you earlier, the ship approaching. I'll give you a little bit of a, a recap on, on what that looks like when I find it. Alright, so as this vessel approaches, and it's approaching very slowly, you can tell you've probably got a couple of hours before this thing is actually going to arrive, but it looks remarkably similar to a 17th century brigantine. It has like a long slender bow. It's fitted with like, it's very difficult to make out from this distance, but it has like, like elegant sort of curving filigree, which sort of lines the railings. Metal rivets, steel reinforcement along the hull. It's now like dull and rusted with age. Um, and that combined with a pair of now that you can get a little bit of a better look at it, what appears to be a pair of, like, what you would, as players know, looks like a pair of jet turbines mounted on the aft end of the ship. It stark, stands in stark contrast to the rest of the more elegant designs of this ship, which sort of suggests that these may have been modifications made after the original construction. But the things that stand out the most about this um, appears to be a living tree which is sprouting from the center of the main deck and on the front deck which you can see quite clearly now because it's approaching you is what appears to be a large cannon of some sort with a rotating or built on top of a rotating platform mm. how big is the cannon yeah how big is the cannon the fact that you can see it from where <laughs> you are it's big. It's a big ass cannon. So oh, I would say it's not, not as big as these cannons, but uh, they're pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, as as it approaches, then uh, John Bloss would look off into the distance and point towards it and say, "Lady Verena, I believe this is our ship, possibly coming here. Um, it's quite, quite." Amazing. I'm. I will be very intrigued to spend some time on it and discover what magics make it work. And as the sunlight have... reflects from the nameplate, which is riveted to the front of the ship, you see the words, "The Autumn Leaves." Nice. Patch will um sort of wander back over now. Is is with with like dragon bits. Um, it's actually quite full. Um, yep. Don't want to um, harvest the dragon penis for medicinal purposes? No. Nope. I, um... We could harvest the meat, though. It's a delicacy, apparently. Void dragon. Sure you want to eat that? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> not really. But the people that we sell the meat to don't need to know that. Oh, right. Anyway, um, yeah. So, Patch, Patch, um, wanders over and, like, looks out towards the ship and sort of peers closely at the tree in the middle of it and it's, and it's just like can i tell that that's like sentient from this distance can i feel it or it? nope no, i'm going to see a tree in the middle of a ship it's like, well that's interesting i like that there's a tree um thrash sort of sees the ship 
coming. And um, like, I haven't really mentioned this, but Thrash doesn't really like magic. She thinks it's sort of pointless and doesn't really see a point. And she thinks it's like, is she, cause she doesn't understand it like a small child. She Remember fears things she doesn't feeling. understand. Yes. Um, <laughs> healing magic is okay because she'd have, like, she'd be around that, but she fears things she doesn't understand, and magic is something that she just can't comprehend. Um, and the ship's sort of coming towards her. She's like, guys, what the fuck is that thing? It, it's a boat, but it flies, and it's also a tree. I think that's our ship. The no. improvement on our last boat. Yeah. Nah, nah. Um, I have this thing against boat tree ships. Um. What do you have against boat tree ships? It's a boat tree ship. Need I say more? Yeah. Are we all actually seeing boat tree ships? I haven't ever need to see a boat tree ship. Why should anyone ever need to see a boat tree ship? That's well, the point that I'm trying to make. It's a boat Flying tree ship for fuck's oh, sake. Oh, oh tree ship. Name to... of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. According according to uh the the, the other Dranvalis over there, um I forgot his name, I'm sorry. The one that uh, died. Yeah. Why are we taking the... advice from a dead goot? Just I'm remind just, me. Just, He's he dead. said that this was this was his ship and it let him travel through the was it the you know. We're taking advice from the dead guy. The guy who sacrificed himself. Well, he this did party give the is messed up. Before he died. Yeah. I'm. I'm okay. Look, can we go back to the abyss? I kind of would rather face the demogorgon, if if mm. that's perfectly fine you with all of you. Really, really want to face that thing. Uh, sure. I mean, it looks more fun when the boat tree ship. It's a boat tree ship. I'm, I'm sure it's got all kinds of boat tree ship diseases. As as the most knowledgeable person on uh, aircrafts, I can assure you that this is probably a lot safer than that of the abyss. Um, Farina. Yes. Aren't you from the Underdark? Yes, but as How we have you established, know anything about flying vehicles. I am a very learned person, and I have read a lot of books. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. book smart, got it. Yes, suspicious. I know a lot of things about building things that do things, and this is a built thing that does things. Okay, I'm following. I want so my distaste noted. No, you're not. Fuck that. I'm the captain. I thought you'd want the big gun. I mean, I do want the big gun, but I am the tallest one here, so I am the captain. Uh, you're and, all kind and, of the and, same and, height. And, and, and Patch looks kind of slightly down at Thrash, being that he's two inches taller, and so is Drambalus. <laughs> hey, hey, we're counting the hair. We're counting the hair. <sighs> what about the horns? I that is a good this. point. Drambalus is the tallest. I am the second tallest. Patch is the third tallest. And Verena is very, very small. Drambalus is the, the captain. The as captain I, Drambalus. As my crew, you guys should stop bickering amongst each other and should learn what authority is. When mm. we, when did we make her captain? That's Nobody a mistake. Did. Look, I, I, I think we let the tree decide. Well, I believe Patch Are we seriously the letting the dog decide? No, the tree. Are we? No, but this is what you do when you're fighting with your siblings over a dog. You put the dog in the middle and you're like, we should let the dog decide. No. Well, the tree we are has adults. feelings too, I'm sure. It's a tree. Patch <laughs> McHotface is not the captain. I want to know at what point in uh, in Thrash's life as a mercenary in a dwarven mercenary company someone did that. But anyway. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> it's how yeah, they like, settle their disputes like... among the mercenaries. <laughs> I mean, the dog was maybe, cut maybe, in half. Maybe it's a very early <laughs> memory from before her parents were killed. And that's how Cleaver got its name. Oh. Maybe she have to because, share the dog. Because, because, you know, a, um, a family of tabaxi had a pet dog. 
just waiting it's for someone to uncommon. click Pitchy McCock face. <laughs> um, I'm complimented. So yeah, let's... Uh, you let's shouldn't be. Paint a bit of a, uh, a word <laughs> picture here. So the four of you are standing here, um, bickering amongst yourselves on this asteroid which floats among the endless sea of wild space. Around you, you can just see a sea of stars. Somewhere in the distance, you can see the light from a very, very distant sun. Now, where you are, it's cold, but it's not unbearably cold. In front of you is the shimmering light of the portal. Um, you got the standing stones and the altar upon which you guys found Kuka Lane. Kuka Lane, of course, being the um, dragonborn legends who Drumballus had been sort of searching for. Um, and he sort of gave you guys a bit of an explanation about what he had been doing. And it sort of tied into Patch's um, sort of backstory with the Gen Telashar or the Tal Gain. He told you that the Tal. What is it? Tal Gain? That's the god, right? No, uh, Tal Tal Gain is the place. Talashrin is Tal the god, and the and the Gen Talashar is the order. The, he told you that. Tal Ashrin had been dead for a very long time. He had, in fact, been mm. resurrected in a way by a mind flayer called Chazradan, who he had been battling for who knows how long across the stars. Which is how he earned his moniker of Star Warden. Now, he told you, he, he, he handed this quest over to you as he faded from existence thanks to a curse that had been placed upon him. And the Craftian's curse. The Craftian's curse, correct. Thank you. I would say give yourself inspiration if you already have it. Um, you could give him in bed, share it around. Double inspiration. And told you. Doesn't stack. Um, or implied that you should follow in his footsteps, beginning with a place called Brawl. Beginning with what? A Brawl. place called Brawl. B-R-A-L. Brawl. Yep. All right, cool. All right. So, what do you want to do? Of course, you still mm. have the portal, and you know that a couple of the people who you've been traveling with, Fluplapine, everyone's favorite. I believe he was played by the rock. Nah. Um and mm -hmm. Jimjar and Patch's dog Bark, still on the other side of the portal, which is in the Underdark. If we're taking votes, guys, I think we leave the Fish King behind. I'll second that. Yeah, I think we don't need to necessarily take him. He was a bit of trouble. He but we're Jimjar. No, if in we're leaving Valuable. him, we're leaving Jimjar. I refuse Fuck you. to bring him. Um. I'm sorry, can you carry him back? Because uh, uh, I don't think you can, and um, this is hand luggage only, this this blight. It, it is carry-on yep. only, and if you can't carry him, then you can't have him. And look at that, I can carry both Jimjar and Bark. Carry-on only. I believe look. it was one item of luggage per passenger. I'm I am. Sure I can carry my own dog. Yeah. Bang. But look. I need to do something about Talishrin. That ship's our means to do so. And I'm pretty sure Drambalus wanted to uh, follow in the in the footsteps of of his hero. But we can't leave. I think. A quick detour to retrieve Jim Jar and Bark, and then we get on the ship and we go. Oh, I'm so proud. He's learning to be mean. Oh, it's adorable. Look, he's learned some shit. <laughs> I'm so proud. Proud what barbarian. Take, what would it take to persuade you against Jim Jar? Um, 
Okay. Um, this is what it would so take. Many times. It would take me locking you in a room with a tentacle staff for five hours while I torture you until you cry. That's what it would take. That That is what it would take. Do you have a tentacle staff? Because I certainly don't. So we're taking Jimjar whether you like it or not. Because I, like, I like him better than you. Some people would pay for that experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think that someone needs to take care of Pluplapine and the ship that we have on the other side of this portal. And Jimjar is just the person for that. Well, putting it that way... No. No, no, bad, bad patch. Sit, stay, heal. Get, uh, the adults me, are talking. Excuse me, I'm not Bark, and I'm probably older Wolf. than you. Um, she turns to Verena. She's like, we are not leaving Jimjar behind. I swear to fucking God, we will um, bring Pluplepeen, but um, Jimjar is coming. Um, Deal? And she spits on her hand and shoves it out to Verena. Could, uh, could I make, uh, make another thing that might resolve all of this how what? about we leave it up to jim jar whether he wants to come with us or not That's he's great. coming no 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 leave it up to a no no so they can have some autonomy fuck autonomy I mean, he's coming whether he wants to or not he may not want to leave the underdark you know like it's his home he, it, and we're coming back with a pretty crazy story he might just be like fucking bye guys Fine. We'll I suppose see. we'll ask him before we kidnap him. Probably a good idea. All I'm yeah. saying. Okay, well, shall we? I or don't see why not. Or should we, should we, um, Dranbalas, can you yes, tell with your studying of the portal, uh, what, if there's any difference in the movement of time between there and here? Um, I'll roll over that check that you did earlier, um, Drone Balas, and I'll tell you that, um, yeah, no, not really. Time is probably moving at the same pace. You get the feeling from the arcane inscriptions that you read, uh, which were, in fact, in, um, whatever dragon, whatever dragon speak, draconian, um, they seem to indicate that you are still within the same... You don't quite understand. It uses terminology that you're not familiar with. It says, same crystal sphere. What that means exactly, you don't know. But you would it would lead you to believe that probably there's not much of a time dilation. Because mm. one thing we do need to do before we really go anywhere is perhaps have a rest. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a bit tapped out after that fight. That's a good point. I am kind of feeling a little spicy. So maybe we, uh, have a rest on the ship, have some sleep. Probably safer on there than on the ground here or back in the Underdark. And then we go and see what's happening with Jim Jar. Yeah, but I'm it's going to take sure a couple of hours for the ship to come. thought it was right there. No, he said off in the distance and it's going to take a couple of hours for the ship to arrive. I, okay. I listen. Well, <laughs> I already well, have inspiration. Does it stack? Take it away and then give yourself a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, well then, maybe... Uh, a short rest now, just so we're not nearly dead. We'll just have have a bit of a breather here, and then duck back through the portal and grab our friends in the hour or so before the ship gets here. Fine. Uh, so yeah. Great. We're okay. taking a short rest. Short rest, uh, yes. We are, in fact. Not gonna get me any spells, so like battle will get me some health. I guess I'm raging. Um, so short rest mechanics. Um, if someone's listening to this for the mm -hmm. first time, you've never played Dungeons and Dragons. First of all, how did you end up here? Second of all, let me tell you about a short rest. A short rest is a period of downtime at least one hour long, during which a character does nothing more strenuous than eating, drinking, reading, 
and tending to wounds. A character can spend one or more hit dice at the end of a short rest up to the character's maximum number of hit dice, which is equal to the character's level. For each hit die spent this way, the character rolls the dice and adds the character's constitution modifier to it. The character regains hit points equal to the total. The player can decide to spend an additional hit die after each roll, and a character regains spent hit die upon finishing a long rest. So, let's talk about where you guys were at with health, and what are you going to get back with a short rest? Um, let's start with Patch. All right, well, I was on 10, and I rolled all but one of my hit dice, and I'm like on like 35 now, because right. I got some really shit rolls. Good. That's how it should be. Um, yep, I, I have one cleric hit dice left. I rolled both my druid hit dice, one of my cleric hit dice, and my barbarian hit dice, and I still only got 25 HP out of it, with a plus three constitution modifier on each of those, mind yeah. you. So, um, yeah. yeah, Mark, uh, continuing tradition, and following... Falling like shit. <laughs> great. I like that. Um, Grace. Well, um, I rolled all but two of my hit dice, and I am pretty much back to full steam. I'm on 57. Um, I don't think I get anything fancy from a short rest. Like, I don't get any of my no. rages back or anything. How many rages so, do you have left? Well, that's a good question, isn't it, Sven? It Let is. me have that's a look at it. that. I only ask a good question. Um, I don't think she's going to be getting pissy anytime soon, but let me have a look at... I have two left, plus my exhaustion rage, but I'm not exhausted, so... Alright, um... Yeah. Okay, so you've got two rages left. She's been um, conserving. I'm going to... Anger during or as we finish our rest um expend the use of my channel divinity um to harness divine power and regain a spell slot up to level two so i have one second level spell slot i have one rage i have hidden step and i have two wild shapes i'll allow it um i felt like i should <laughs> this is this would be like this is something that i want to do but i'm not going to do it i felt like i should make you roll to see if you accidentally forget that your water skin is filled with void dragon blood and accidentally drink the void dragon blood and contract crap. Oh my god. I mean, I think, I, I think, like, since I just harvested it and it's probably still got some blood around the outside, that would be, I would probably remember now, but if I don't mark it specifically and put it aside later and, you know, get a new wall, I would have forgotten. I feel like you, like, you, but, you grab it out out of, like, um, out of ritual. You just sort of grab it out of your pack, you uncork it, and you go, Ooh, yeah. ooh, wait a second. Probably don't want to do yeah. that. Um, <laughs> what about Dran Ballas? What does Dran Ballas get back with a short rest? How are you looking for health? You went down a couple yeah, of times. So, yeah, I did. I, was, I wasn't looking real good. Um, I had seven out, 17 out of 32 um, after the last encounter. Mm -hmm. um, so I've rolled two hit dice, one of my clerics, which is a D8, and one of my wizards, which is a... 1d6 i'm popped back up now to uh where did it go 32 out of 34 so that's a pretty good result um the five on the d8 and the six on the d6 killing it all right well look at you uh froth uh the opposite of mark always rolling rocks um but you don't get any of your spells back from a short rest do you um, I don't believe so. I'm just trying to refresh my character sheet so I can have a look at it. Um, this is Eric. No, you won't. No. You might have Arcane Recovery, though, which you can use to get a spell slot back. Not sure I do. Oh. No? Have it might a look. be a high level. See if you got that. What you are. In the meantime. You also... Oh, as the Cleric, you should be able to use your... If you turn your optional features on in your builder, you should be able to use the um, Channel Divinity to restore a spell slot, same as I did. That's yeah, yeah. Thing at level 2. Yeah. yeah, I could do that, but I'll save it. Alright. Um, in the meantime, Alicia, what um, yeah, does Arena get? Um, uh, gets nothing from a short rest except hit dice. Uh, I was at 20 out of 33, and now I'm at 32 out of 33. Okay. Hey. Right. So you're looking pretty good. In good shape. You guys will, uh... Yeah. You're gonna live forever. Hey, hey, Grace. How yeah. many HP does... What's Thrash's max HP? 
Um, at the moment, yeah. or in general? In maximum, in general. Um, in general. Oh Jesus, I have absolutely no idea. Is that something 63. I should just know? Sixty-three. Yeah. I was gonna oh, I thought you meant as a barbarian, and I was like, how does someone just know that off the top of their head? Jeez. Um. Yeah. yeah no, Sixty-three. No, like, what? 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 Thrash's actual, you know, mm. max HP is 63, cool. That's good. All right, so an hour passes. Um, unless you guys want to roleplay something during that hour, we can, we can move ahead. Um, the portal is there, it's still open. The ship is about halfway mm -hmm. to you now. You can see it in, uh, in much clearer detail. What do you want to do? Um, Thrash will turn to Verena and she's like, well, you know, you did say something about holding hands before. Would you uh, still want to do that? Yeah. Well, we jumped through the port. No, that understandable. That's why I asked first. You were just like peeling a dragon over there. Uh, well hey, I was not. not pe I was not peeling the dragon. He was peeling the dragon. I was making it say funny things with, with its your hands. teeth. Yeah. Yeah, and I have nice, pristine gloves that I would like to keep that way for just a little bit longer. She grabs them anyway. She just, like, absolutely smacks her hands on top of Verena's, and she's like, See? They're not that dirty. It's, like, totally fine. And she just flicks off a tiny piece of scale that, like, got <laughs> on her glove. She's like, It's totally fine! They're really fine. I think I'm going to pass out. <laughs> Yeah, you'll live. You get used to, like, the dirt and grime when you're in, like, a 12-person room with absolutely no privacy, and you're all sort of there in bunk beds, and it's like, hey, buddy, and I'm like, hey, buddy, you it know? sounds like it's going somewhere else. No, no, I'm just, this is how mercenary life is. You're dirty all the time. It just smells like man, which I'm not. Yep. I continue yes. my statement. Okay. Shall we get moving, ladies? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Let's be as quick as possible about this. I would like to have some idea of where we are staying. Awesome. If after we get our friends. Maybe both of them, maybe only friend. one. Friend. We'll see what Jim and Jar thinks when we get there. Friends. Mm -hmm. Plural. As in more than one. Oh, wow. And Thrash does not let go of Verena's hand. She walks <laughs> to the portal, hand in hand with Verena, and she's like swinging it back and forth. She's making a massive deal out of it. Do you want to resist this, Verena? <laughs> um, Would you like to wishes... attempt to resist this, she Verena? She could, but she knows better. I love being the strong one. This is great. <laughs> All right, shall we go then? Yes, let's. Does Patch hold out a hand to Drunvalis? <laughs> you, know, you know what? Yes. <laughs> Drunvalis are just oh my god. Patch will chuckle. Patch will, Patch will chuckle. <laughs> you know, like... You... As I, I, says, like, no. I want you to use yeah. that point of rage now, please. No. no I got Me? <laughs> oh, no, <Absolutely> him. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not All getting right, angry. So... I, 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 was, I was joking around. Like, Patch was joking around. So it's like, it was good. Let's talk about party order. Who's stepping through this swirling grey void first? Well, obviously, Thrash, Thrash and, and Lady Verena attached it. Thrash yeah. and Next. Lady Verena. Drone Ballas and Patch, as before, you see Thrash and Lady Verena step into this swirling grey um, miasma that stands before you. And as they step through, you see the perfect outline of them like waves ripple out that bounce along the outsides of this circular portal. And they cast this sort of almost water-like light which dances across this cold stone floor of the asteroid. Shum! Shum! They're both gone. Let's go then. And Pat and Drambala, so you follow shortly after them, stepping into this portal. 
stepping back through you're greeted once again with the sensation of your soul being unceremoniously like jerked from your physical form and even though you're more prepared this time for this out of body sensation it's still as shocking as it was the first time you once again find yourself untethered from your physical body and not really seeing but just knowing that you are floating in a great swirling great void can i get everybody to make a perception check for me oh fuck sure. do i want to su succeed this or is this like a um call of cthulhu thing where you don't want to succeed this nine let's find out 21 nine nine 21 <laughs> Um, let's see. 12. 20. 20. Alright, so Lady Verena and somehow Thrash, maybe it's because you two were the first people to step <laughs> through this portal. Um, in that brief out-of-body moment that you have while you're sort of your spirit floats through this great endless void, unshackled from your mortal coil, you feel as though something is malevolent is watching you. You're not sure what it is. Um, and time and space seem to hold no meaning in this place. But somehow you understand you could resist that if you want to. Or perhaps you could attempt to overpower it and glean more information about what it is. But you do understand that that would come at some risk to you. Alternatively, you could choose to ignore it, and you, that will come at no risk to yourself. Um, Patch? I'll look at it. And Ballas, you have no idea. So, let's I want to raid Steve all things up. fantasy. Hey, thank you for the raid, all things fantasy. It's good to see you guys in 2023. Hope you guys are having a great time, and you had a great Christmas, and great New Year's. Thank you for joining us. So... Verena, yeah. What are you trying to do? Uh, you want to do what? I want to get a better look at a better look at the surroundings, a better understanding. Want to know the unknown. So you feel, you can feel this malevol malevolent presence mm -hmm. as it sort of washes over you. You know mm -hmm. that something is watching you. Mm -hmm. So are you trying to overpower it to see if you can glean more information out of it? Or yeah. are you trying to block it out? No, I'm tr I want to know more about it. Alright, you want to know more about it. Yeah. Thrash, you feel the same thing. This is feeling of being watched by something great. Something powerful that is able to see you through this gray void in which you float. Do you want to try and block it out? Well, I'm... Do you want to try and over? I mean... It? Or do you want to ignore it? Eva, the mercenary. Thrash obviously doesn't want anyone having the upper hand on her, so she's gonna try and figure out what the fuck this thing is. Alright, so you're trying to overpower it as well. Okay, yeah. well... I'll get the both of you... We gone die. <laughs> to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh no! I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be easy. A mistake! A mistake was made! Hey, Drambalus. Yo. Looks like it might just be you and me going off through the stars, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Good day. Uh, this is <laughs> Matt. Oh we'll no. Don't forget, you do have inspiration if you wish to use it. Um, you don't have to. I can't look. Do we? You do. You do. Roll Everyone does. Stop Everyone it! Does you guys have done such okay. a fucking awesome job. I, mean, I got a nat 21. Ooh. Nat 21. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, so goodbye. You rolled a 21 on a on a d20. Can you tell me how you did nat that? Nat 20. And I got a nat 20 plus, plus one. one. Nat 20 plus one. Okay. Well, there you go. That makes more sense. Oh wow, Verena! Yeah. Oh my god. All right. What, so uh, you, no. Are you are you locked on rolling eights again? 
Apparently. <laughs> I love this game. Uh, I don't. Is it, is it, I wasn't really do. If you're not <laughs> playing Dungeon Dragons in 2023, get the hell out of here. What's wrong with you? Um, so, Thrash the Troublesome, you got a 21. Lady Verena. Woo! With a gentleman's eight. nine. Or an eight. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that. Let's start with um, Thrash. Yo. Um, the smart one. Let's start um, with the smart one. What do I have to here? <laughs> There we go. So you you focus inwards, and you sort of focus on your spirit. And you're able to steal it against this alien influence. It determines not only to push back, but to force your way through its defenses. And pain racks your spirit. Um, nice. Can I get you to roll a d8 for me? I don't like this. I like it even <laughs> less that he's making me roll for things. Oh, eight. Is that good or bad? I want you to be responsible for your own fate. So yeah. you take nine points eight. of psychic damage. Oh. Oh, the With worst success. kind of damage to take for a barbarian. Okay. As you throw your That's consciousness okay. across the void, following the malevolent tether, trying to... Follow it back to its source. As you do so, you understand somehow that whatever it is wasn't expecting your response, and you sense the entity almost scrambling to try and re establish the psychic defenses. But in that brief moment, in that flurry, you, you, you like a, a cascade of images uh, appear before your eyes in a dizzying flash. It might take a little bit of time for you to be able to unravel what you just witnessed, but you know in your heart that you've been given a glimpse into something, into the very minds of your enemy. And you also understand that you just got extremely lucky by catching them off guard like you did. As you struggle to process what you saw, you suddenly find yourself standing back in the tomb of the Night Warden. Now, the person who travelled with you, however, is not so lucky. Verena, mm. here in the Rat void, bro. you attempt to focus your spirit <coughs> against the entity as it attempts to probe deeper into your mind. However, unaccustomed to the sensation of this out-of-body experience, you flail around helplessly, only succeeding in leaving yourself even more vulnerable, and the entity quickly takes advantage of this moment to push further into your psyche. Can I get you to roll 2d8 for me? Uh-huh. Uh, this is gonna hurt. Danger, rested. It's 10. 10. So you're gonna take 12 points of psychic damage as the malevolent entity forces its way into your very soul. You understand immediately your mistake as you can feel it dig through your memories. Flashes of the recent past swirl unbeckoned behind white-hot agony that racks your spirit for what seems like an age. And as you step back through the portal, Thrash, you feel Verena, Verena collapse down to the ground as you're holding onto her hand. And shortly after, shoom, shoom, Patch and Dranballas both appear as well. You see Verena probably holding onto her head, blood trickling out of her nose. What do you do? Um, well, Ooh, Thrash is good. instantly gonna bend over and, like, start, like, gagging and potentially, like, trying to stop herself from throwing up. She looks up at the guys and she's like, I did not like that. That was gross. Mean, yeah. scary mind thing trying to get into my head. I saw what? some shit. It was not fun. That, that shit was not fun to see. And um, now she's kind of down for the count. Um, Thrash sort of takes out her water skin and throws it in Verena's face to try and wake her up. <laughs> she's awake. She's alive, uh, but um, she yeah, she, she's in a lot of pain. Yo, you you all good down there, my dude? 
Marina's just gonna, uh, like, stand up, trying to bear as much pain as possible without showing it on her face, and is just gonna keep walking. Okay, well, we're gonna take that as a yes, as a heck yes. Um, okay. Um, off to get our friend. Yay. And then Thrash sort of turns around and starts, like, hacking again. Hmm. And you are now back um, in the tomb of the Night Warden, sort of this square chamber in the center of the tomb, and you see the exact replica of the portal that you stepped through just before. And as Thrash starts to leave the room, as she passes through the threshold of the doorway leading into this room, the one that had the runes, the draconic runes written along the archway, you hear a grinding noise and the portal closes behind you I'm going to um, place a hand on my shoulder and give myself a vigilant blessing to have advantage on my next initiative roll just in cases and then get out my shield and my warhammer and um, get ready to make our way through we know we can open this portal back up because we know the sequence uh, but we've got to make our way back through this ziggurat thing back to our friends so let's be cautious about it Agreed? Yeah. Yep. Okay, guys. Is everyone... Is everyone... Verena, are you okay? I'm fine, okay? Okay. Well, then, let's go. So, there's a couple of things you have to talk about. Of course, you are in total darkness inside the tomb, but you also know it's total darkness outside the tomb. So, we have to keep in mind what you can see. We know that um, Verena... Thrash and Patch all have um, dark vision. John Ballast Give me is money. not. So how do you I have bad vision. Oh, you've got Give bad vision. One moment. Oh, I've already used Eyes of Night, so yeah, he's going to have to use his bad vision. So let's talk about... So I believe Verena, you've got 60 feet. Thrash, you'll have 60 feet. Dran Ballas, you have your bat vision. So... What kind of dark vision does the bat have, exactly? Distance? Um, I believe... <clears throat> I'm just having a quick look now. Um, blind sight, 60 feet. Blind sight, 60 feet. So, basically... Um, is that... So, that's your using your familiar's vision? Yeah. You know you basically have to go catatonic when you do that, right? I see through its eyes, I believe it yeah, says. Yeah, but while you're doing it, you can't... Um, use your own senses at all. But I can still walk, right? I mean, sure, but you might bump into something because you can't see where you're going. That is yeah, something that was shoulder, sort of so. ruled incorrectly in the past. So, yeah. basically, you don't just get the bat's vision. You have to be doing nothing in order to get the bat's vision. So, while you're no. traveling, you're going to need a light source or someone's going to have to guide you. You have the coin... I think that emits yeah. light. Yeah. So you got so, that. So you have that. Five yep. feet of yeah. bright of dim light. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So keep in mind, you've only got that five feet of dim light. Everybody else, sixty feet of dark vision. Do keep that in mind. So you're leaving the tomb. Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, just give me one second while I do something all right so you make your way through this tomb and back to the entrance that five foot wide 20 foot high corridor with steps leading up into the gloomy darkness beyond you make your way up the stairs and you see lying on the ground a severed spider's leg What? This. Did you do? Is this a wasn't there before? 
No, it was. If you recall last time when you actually entered the tomb, you had to rush mm -hmm. inside um, as it was sort of, you know, it had spiders. That had oh, that's home right. On the yep. outside of this tomb. All right. Well, it's been a bit of time. Is there, so, and we closed the thing behind us so they couldn't follow us in or they just couldn't fit? Um, you closed it behind you. They couldn't fit if they squeezed. Yeah, all right, so we should maybe cautiously try and open this thing and hope there aren't too many spiders. Yeah, this sounds is like a good idea. Sneak out, sneak out. Hopefully they've forgotten mm -hmm. about us and gone about their business. All, all right, right. Um, what I'll do is we will do a group stealth check. All right. Rolling stealth. How badly <laughs> can we roll a stealth? Oh, hey, this green. is so true. It is stuck on eights for me. Yeah, I think you need a refresh or something. I am road. refreshing it. Uh, I will also allow you to roll physical dice if you want to roll physical dice. You just have to tell us. What I'll it try it one more time. Try it one. And see time. if it works. Did you have to like just refresh, or did you have to like close it and reload from the joint? I've before? closed above VTT and D and D Beyond. Yeah, cool. So I accidentally rolled. Like I accidentally rolled from D and D Beyond, not in the game, but just to let everyone know I'm helping out with the average, and I got a nat twenty. Right. Yeah, yeah, nice Yay. one. Thank you. I got a sixteen, so I'm very yeah, mediocre. Me twenty, sixteen, 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 and three. So I'd say the it average. It wouldn't be. Is still reasonable. Reasonable. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Um, who opens the door? I guess me. I went through first. Okay. Um, yeah. Verena, you push up against the door and you it starts to grind as it opens up and someone puts their hand on you. It's like, stop, crash, does that. Mm -hmm. Sort of, yeah. she positions her claws underneath the door jam and lifts it up, taking some of the weight off the hinges allowing you to push the door open with much less noise and much less vibration. You push the door open and it opens up into that wide open cavern in the Underdark. You are with still standing inside the doorway of this um, ziggurat, as Mark described it, a stepped pyramid. It's covered in spider webs. You can see 60 feet out in front of you, all you can basically see is just cold, hard stone, massive towers of uh, stalagmites that tower up into a vaulted ceiling high above you. And you can sort of hear the sound of water lapping up against the shore that you know is around about ooh, 200 plus feet away from where you are. Uh, where you are. I will um, make my way out because we know I can see a bit further than everybody else. Um, I might suggest that Drambalus gets led by someone else while we're getting off the ziggurat yeah. and hides the um, light. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look out and see if I can see the shore and see if the boat's still there from, from where I am because I have 300 feet of dark vision. All right. A couple of things that you do see. Mm -hmm. Patch. You see the shore. You see the boat where you left it? It's sort of half beached on the dark stones of the pebbles of this makeshift beach, so to speak. But the thing that catches your eye more than anything else, you see Jinja with his hands bound, Shit. gagged. You see what Bark. In hell. Bark is sitting next to one figure who is surrounded by a number of other figures. Now, it's that figure that Bark is sitting next to that draws your attention. She has her hand resting on Bark's head. You say and she? You have to double take. Because the person that you see standing on that shore with her hand resting on Bark's head and in the other hand clutching a 12 inch long metal rod that ends in tentacles 
that writhe in anticipation of the coming confrontation is a woman who looks physically identical to Verena. What the actual fuck? And we'll go for a short break. No, you can't do that. I think you'll find I can. Everybody, <laughs> everybody watching on Twitch, please stick I, with I'm us. I'm like... This will be a you... short break. Couple minutes, tops. We'll be right back. If you're listening uh, on Spotify or whatever, watching back on YouTube, this break will be very, very quick for you guys. But for those who joined us with the raid, if you're still here, please stick around. We'll be right back. We're going to find out what's going on. I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Yep. And it's finally happening. We'll be right back, guys. It just wouldn't be a Critmas stream if there wasn't some type of cliffhanger. So, I had to throw that in there. In the middle? You normally save it till the end, Sven. I was going to say, I'm surprised it's in the middle. I know, I'm but glad this is, it's in the yeah, middle. This is 2023, baby. We do two <laughs> cliffhangers <laughs> now. Every year we add another cliffhanger onto the episode. So next year it'll be three cliffhangers per episode. The year after that, four cliffhangers. And in 2028, like it's just going to be crit and miss roll. Oh, cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Enti entire cast of Fabi on the Void dies of heart attack 2025. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Sylvester Stallone joins the crew. Yeah. <laughs> keeping, keeping in mind that Patch is the only person that can see this I'll give you a little bit more about what you can see you can see Jim Jar and right behind him as his hands are bound he's gagged he's kneeling on the floor and standing behind him holding onto his shoulder with a hand crossbow pointed, pointed right at his head is a drow warrior you can mm -hmm. see obviously the woman who looks identical to Verena, standing right beside him, sort of with her hands resting on Bark's head, sort of with one delicate finger tracing the line along his forehead. How does he look? Slowly. He's just sitting there. He looks okay. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him. He's not bound. He's not gagged. He's just. Is he, is he, is he scared? Sitting there. Well, we'll get to that. You see another drow woman. Um, not dressed quite as um, elegantly as Verena's doppelganger. And behind her, you can see a row of five drow and one other drow warrior who looks scarred. Half oh, face, that motherfucker. He's heavily scarred, and you can see he's missing a couple of fingers on one of his hands. Now, I'll get you to roll a perception check for me, and I'll actually get you to do that with disadvantage, because you only have dim light. Oh, not one. Five total. You can't see. You can't even make out the details. Bark is just seems to just be sitting there. Almost as if in the same way that he would sit by your side. Okay. Um, but I can definitely see that this this drow woman with a tentacle rod looks identical to Lady Verena, yeah? From this distance? Yeah. Yes, that's how it appears. I'm going to sort of... I'm going to do a double take between the two of them. And then just, like, hold my hand up to let the guys know to... You know, and I'm just going to... Like, um, why are we There's stopping? A bunch of drow down there. Oh, <laughs> fuck me, dead. Seriously? Sorry. See, as Thrash calls out like that, you see that woman stop and stop tracing her finger along Bark's head and look over towards the ziggurat. And you see. I didn't say anything. So much for the element of surprise. All right, before this all blows up, Verena, do you want to tell me why she looks exactly like you? Uh, what? She looks exactly like me. 
there's, there's uh, a drow okay. woman out there that looks exactly like you, and she's got a rod with tentacles and stuff, and she's got her hands on my dog. I don't a like tentacle this. Tentacle rod? No, I don't like really tentacle offensive. rods. No, Wait. no, I'm, I, I'm not talking just because she's drow. I mean, there are other drow there that don't look like you. She looks exactly rod. like you. She has a tentacle rod? Yes. Well, I, I so thought you had a tentacle yeah, you had a tentacle rod. And I do. Well, yeah. apparently she does. Well, that's very nice of her. This is hurting my brain. Can I insight check Verena right now? Uh, yes. Um, Verena, give me a roll. Uh, and Patch, give me an insight. Nineteen. Am I sending it to you? Send it to me, yeah. Cool. She seems to be as confused by this as you are. Okay. Well... They know we're here now. We might have to fight to get our friends back. That's you. fucking fine. I don't Your... fucking mind pounding that bitch's face in all over again. I don't care which one of them it is. I'm still gonna pound her face in. Verena? Yes. Your own people? Yes? These might be my people. Well, they're drow, right? Like, do you are you okay killing other drow? Yes. Are you okay killing other furbolks? Not really. That's a little strange. Well, they're, we're all kind of peaceful, you know? Like, I'd have no reason to kill another furbolg. They wouldn't be try trying to hurt me or my friends. That's a very weird concept that I frankly don't think we have time to get into. Okay, well, let's um, let's get ready then. This is, could be problematic. Wh which, which scary bitch lady am I punching? The one with the tentacle rod. The one that's okay. the one that's the one that's got bark. Not not this one with us. She's apparently seems to me I like don't know. doesn't know what's going on either, so I don't know mm. what's happening. Um could I maybe maybe I could distract scary tentacle bitch lady. She doesn't like me, I don't like her. Maybe we could tussle for her and you guys can get Bark and Jimjar out of there, and I can distract her because I'm not sure if you noticed, but I am mildly infuriating. Um, okay, and let's I'm try that. very good at annoying. Yes. Um, so Ash is just gonna call out, "Hey, I escaped from you. That that must be very embarrassing for your dumb ass with your fucking tentacle rod. Who the fuck do you think you are?" And as and as and as um, Thrash is making all, all of a commotion, um, Patch is gonna um, use hidden step. Oh wait, yes, I do have the letter, and he's he's going to disappear right before she starts doing that, so that he is invisible, um, and attempt to start moving closer. As you use your hidden step, and Thrash mm -hmm. calls out, her voice echoes among the cavernous halls, disturbing some bats which were roosting on the stalagmites above you and as you start to turn invisible you see the woman switch the hand that she's holding the tentacle rod from her left into her right hand holding it dangerously close to bark and as it approaches him he doesn't move he just sits there and the tentacles writhe in anticipation of a ta, 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 no. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be quite frankly truthful. We both know that the only one you want to use that rod on is me. This hot piece of very rodable tabaxi, right? Here. <laughs> very rodable. Sounds so bad. Uh... <laughs> Yikes. Oh man, that tabaxi is so rodable. <laughs> yeah, this... yeah. And tentacle rodable at that. This has <laughs> taken a real turn. Um <laughs> Crit and Miss goes hentai. <laughs> oh my god. Tune in for the animated version. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I didn't realize how that's 
Um, no, I. You yeah. see, you see her raise an eyebrow as you say that, and as you're talking, um, you see. Never hated anything more. The other drow female standing slightly, slightly behind her and and to her left, she her hands begin to move as she begins to cast a spell. Interesting. Yeah. Is this spell taking away things that dumb people thought sounded good in their head and then they said it and it sounded slightly inappropriate? Um, is it that spell? <laughs> no, that unfortunately is canon. Um, mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> unfortunately, well, fortunately, because I quite enjoyed that. Um, but that is that. I is did it. That happened. Um, <laughs> Let me have a look here, real quick. Do, 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 do. Thank um, you, mod. What do you give us? Advantage. <laughs> Thank you, we're gonna need it. What, I thought you were Thank on buddy. my side. Um. Um. Gods, I wish I could have done this any quicker. So, as she's casting this spell, you can see three tiny little motes of light start to materialize in the air in between you and them. What do you want to do? Get the fog uh, out so of my face. My, oh. um, my invisibility only lasts for a turn, so like six seconds, so it's going to be enough for me to get like 30 feet closer. Okay. Right. Um, um, I'm just fairy fire. Something. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Thrash is, is there some sort of performance check I could roll to make this more distracting, like, um, yeah, or intimidation actually, maybe? Roll me an intimidation check. Oh, I'm very I'm good at those. i probably with disadvantage because of what you said. Um, you and... might have advantage because of what I said, because I caught off guard, because I wouldn't expect something that dumb to come out of my mouth. <laughs> I'll give you a flat roll. Roll a flat Thank roll. Thank you. <laughs> Let me have this. Let me have this. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Um, where is it? At least I'm good at this. I am very good at this. I have a thing I want to do before shit kicks off, if there's time. I got a 12, but can I use my inspiration to re-roll it? Um, yeah, sure, if you wish to do so. Grace using her inspiration the conventional way? What didn't is you already this? Roll? Didn't you already use your inspiration when you stepped through the portal? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Ali used hers. Oh, right. Yeah. Ali yeah. used hers. Um, I got a 19. 19. Pretty good. Patch? Uh, I would like I would like to, as my invisibility drops, rush forward another thirty feet and cast sleep at second level. Alright. That's gonna happen. Then this is gonna kick off. Alright, cool. Oh, nice. So I'll move forward the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet to there. Sleep has a range. Which will give me range to reach to Almost the back of the pack, but that's not where I'm casting it. Um, 20 foot sphere. As you get to there, you can also see Plupapine lying on the floor to the west. Ed? Look at that. Tell. Everyone is in it. Mm. Really? No, that's not what I want to do. No. No, okay. I want to put it like... I want to lift it up and have it so that just the bottom of the sphere is touching Drow Lady with the tentacles and only her. So her and only her? Her and only her. Alright, let's talk about the sleep spell. Sleep spell, I'll send it to the game log and then so it can send creatures into a magical slumber. I roll 5d8. That's the total of how many hit points of creatures the spell can affect. Creatures within 20 feet of a point I choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. That's why I focused on just her because it's her I'm trying to put to sleep. Yep. Um, 
Undead creatures and creatures immune to being charmed aren't affected by the spell. I really hope she's not immune to being charmed. At second level or higher, roll an additional 2d8 for each slot above the first. So I'm rolling 7d8, and that's the amount of hit points I'm able to put to sleep. If it equals or exceeds her total hit points, she goes to sleep. Oh, righty right. then. No, no saving throw. So Roll 7d8 one, for me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I get the feeling this may not 40. work. I respect you, not. but I don't point. think if it's... She... And she got 40 or less? Everybody? Mm hmm? Roll for initiative. Mm -hmm. Fuck! Your spell goes what? off. You become visible. Oh, and she laughs at you. Right. Did yep, my uh, intimidation work? Oh, I mean... What happened? It gave Patch what? the ability to do what he just did. Normally I wouldn't allow you to just run over and cast a spell like that against someone who knows that you're there, but I allowed it. Yeah. Unfortunately, he chose poorly. Um, Fuck. That spell Damn. has okay. no effect yeah. whatsoever. Uh, and Mod, what did he... Advantage for you guys, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, well, I guess you can... Also, that's that. my only spell slot, guys. <laughs> I used my inspiration on that. What a mistake. We're having fun. I now. didn't use it in a fun way. No. At all. I'll, I'll let you use mine in a fun way if you, if you need it for something. <laughs> if you have a hear me Thank out, you. you can use my inspiration for it. Thank you. If Wait till we get to the rotting. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got you a You guys are never well. going to let me go. No, well, totally. You guys are never going to let that go, ever, are you? That's just going to be a thing now. Here's what yep. I'll tell you what happens. You cast that spell. What does it look like? You become visible, obviously. And does this spell have some type of visual effect? Um, yeah, it'll be like... Because uh, it, it requires... A, I can use my map, but I'm, I'm not. I'm, I reach into my component pouch and um, just flick this sand in her general direction. And then it sort of like twinkles out of existence a few feet in front of me and then reappears above her and then starts to rain down um and it's all glimmery and stuff and it just does nothing and as it falls and dances around her you see her hear her chuckle and it's not a a laugh of mirth or warmth it chills you to your very bone hearing this person laugh mm. <laughs> a pathetic attempt, but I expected no more from those who would travel with the tabaxi. Yeah. Okay, that is just racist. You are just a racist bitch. That is what this is. You are actually a bad wait, person. Wait, did, did she say that is racist or ah? Fuck. Ah, she did, said did ah she tabaxi. Say... No, no, she said ah tabaxi. I heard her. Racist. You can come out now, she says, and she reaches into within the um, neck of her breastplate and she lifts out a small silver chain. Oh. She takes it off over her head and she holds it out in front of her, fingering it. And she holds it out, sort of dangling it. You and I, we have unfinished business. And I Damn promise right the spider we do. queen a plaything. Or, 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 he, he is, I have an idea. See, I promised that I would get that necklace back to no one in particular but myself. And um, you kind of have it. And that's a better chain than I had on it originally. I actually appreciate the upgrade because that's going to be on my neck in 20 fucking minutes. I am going to pound your face into the ground. That beat up that I gave Verena when we first met, oh, that was just a, that was a practice run. I am going to beat you so far into the ground that your children are going to feel it. Except you're gonna have none, because you'll be dead. She looks towards you, Patch, and she says, Now, I don't know who you are. I have no interest in you. Just give me the tabaxi and 
your friends can leave. You want me to give you thrash? Wait, that's all it would take for you to stop this? You just want me? Oh, yes. These others I have no interest in. But when you make a promise to the Spider Queen, you keep it. It took me a lot longer it's... to find you than I had hoped, but... And she... Hatch casts a guiding bolt in her face using the last use I've got from my star map while she's saying this. Alright. Let's freaking do this. Round one of combat, which is happens to be you, Patch. 18 to hit. 18 is going to be a wait for it. Hit. You can take 15 radiant damage. 15 radiant damage. damage. Yep. And then I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 towards her. And bonus action, rage. Getting my warhammer and um, shield ready to go. Shield was already out. Your guiding bolt hits her square in the face. She puts her hand up. And as she does so, she drops the necklace on the floor. Next person's turn is one of uh, one of my creatures. All right, you guys see this sudden eruption of light, and Patch runs forward. You can't see who he's talking to. You cannot see them. Um, and it's one of my creatures' turns, so it is going to ooh, have a look here. I feel like it's not going to matter that Patch is all keen to learn about this tree because I think he might be dead by the end of this fight. Oh, it's very yeah, I think we all might be dead by the end of this fight. Yeah, yeah, TPK, I think... first episode of Bobby on the Void. <laughs> no, I, I don't think this TPK is meant for you guys, with all due respect. Oh, I think it's meant for me. I think it's meant for me. Not happening. <laughs> it's coming for me. I've sensed it. It's my time to die, bitches. Alright, let's move... Uh. This this uh, this drow warrior, the scarred drow warrior, his half of his face is scarred, like it's very deeply scarred. He reaches down, pulls out a hand crossbow, moving north towards you, Patch, thirty feet, and he is now how far away? Oh, thirty feet, thirty-five. All right, let's roll this with disadvantage. Um. No, actually, that's not what he's going to do. I need you to make a dex save, Patch. Dex save? Yes, give me a dexterity why, saving throw. Why would you do a thing like that? Are Damn. you above? Because I'm a terrible person. Do you get advantage on that? Oh, I'm raging. Do I, can I see whatever's happening? Oh, I'm only level one barbarian. Isn't that a level two trait? Um... Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a later level thing. Um, so, you are suddenly surrounded by these ethereal purple flames that are very reminiscent of a Varina cast on uh, Plupropane just a couple of episodes ago. And they dance from your feet up your legs and cover your torso, and you are now fucking very lit up. So, keep that in mind. Uh, you have um, 10 foot radius of dim lights. Go ahead and chuck that on you. Um, mm -hmm. As you cast Fairy Fire on you. And that is going to be the end of his turn. Thrash the Troublesome, you're up. Oh, fuck. I hate having to be good. Um, so, probably the most pensive you've ever seen Thrash. Like, she actually slowly lowers her fist and sort of puts her great axe back on her back. She's like, were you serious about the whole me for them thing? You know, before he hit you with the giant bolt of lightning, because um, I really don't see this as 
they're sort of this is our ish, not their ish. So I'm afraid we're I mean, if far you really beyond wanna... negotiating now. Oh come on, Pat. She could have done the whole. You take me, but I could have been very heroic, and now you're making me fucking beat her up. I do want to beat her up, but um, I mean, come on. Are you, you, are you had like a spider are you, queen thing. Are you thing. really disappointed that Pat just just charged at her? Not not particularly. <laughs> but, um, you've you changed her alignment to good. Change the floor of the <laughs> altar of the spider queen. Die. And and now I just want to kick her ass. Okay, um, I am very likely gonna die, but that's fine. Um, that I'm. You do. What? That tabaxi movement thing you do? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, yeah. That's just just gonna look over his shoulder and be like, "Come on, Thrash, let's get her." So I am going to use my. I'm gonna call it the special tabaxi movement special because I don't know what else to call it. Um, so that's my conventional movement. Of course, I'm gonna rage as my bonus action. But um, that's my convention. No, I won't rage now. I'll rage later. Sorry, semantics. Um, I'm going to move with my conventional movement 40 feet, and then my dash 40 feet, and then my feline agility another 40 feet, giving me 120 feet of movement. Um, so I will come up. It's gonna get you there. Yeah, it'll get me there and some. Oh, um, you'll, you'll get to you can get to Jim or you can you can get to the warrior and cast fairy fire on me and actually probably hit him about there yeah he's 125 yeah. feet from where he started oh really exactly yeah. 125 feet yeah oh because then I could have no he's only 85 feet if I move diagonally uh, from from where you started at uh, ruler uh, yeah 125 feet to the square in front of him so oh, 125 damn it. feet to reach the nearest assailant. The next one yeah. would be ooh, 150 Jim feet. Jar. Yeah, you can just okay. reach Jim Jar with 140 though, if you want to get to Jim Jar and try and pull him away from those guys or something. Yeah, I might do that if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So you're using an action yeah. to dash. You're using your tobacco movement and you're mm -hmm. using your movement speed to get there. You can put yourself right in front of Jim Jar. Yeah, oh, that's pretty you, much are it. Are you act action dashing to get that far? Hmm. Yeah, right, okay. Yep, no worries. Alright. Because otherwise I could only get 80 feet. Yeah, no, that's, so, that, it's probably better that you can get in their face, you're raging and, you know. I just want to shove myself in front of Jim Jar, but yeah, I might... Actually, yeah, I take it back, I will rage if that's okay. Even if it's a waste of a rage, probably gonna need it. You're um. gonna get fucking... We're both about to get nailed, like... Yeah, I've got 48 hit points. I regret not rolling that extra hit die. Yeah. We have no spell slots. This is going to be... I this is... Yeah, we're going to die, very likely. There you go. As you're running towards him, this drow stows his hand crossbow. Um, well, drops his hand crossbow and strikes Jim Jar as he's kneeling in front of this drow warrior. Strikes um, him with what? Strikes him with... Let's have a look here. A His fist of runies. Short sword. Dropping uh -oh. the hand crossbow, drawing the uh, the short sword, and uh, making two attacks with advantage on Jimja. Can I take the hit for him? Or... Uh, no, sorry. You cannot. Uh, so the first one is a 17, which is going to be hit for... Oh, Alright, not too bad. Uh, five points of piercing damage and... 14, so 19 points of damage. Um, go ahead and take off 19. Well, you know what? We'll make another attack first, so... Oh, with advantage. Roll, roll. 21. Alright, so that's going to be a hit for. Hey, Jim Jar's going to be dead when I get there. 10. <laughs> well, that's you're, you're there, but. 29 points of damage. Alright, Jim Jar goes unconscious. Awesome. Okay, we have health mm. potion. Thanks, Mod. Thank hey. you. We're gonna need him. 
Oops, I think I just changed the wrong thing there. Is this is this like that tale like that tales all this time where you get character art drawn and you're psyched about the character art and then the first session you use it all, all your characters die? Is it is this is this that? Oh yeah, that old story. Yeah. That yeah. Old fairy tale. Um where Rumpelstiltskin got his character art drawn and then pricked his finger on a needle and died. No, that's not what this is. This is the result of just some very poor decision making on your behalf. This could have gone a number of different ways. This is, how, this is what you wanted to have happen, and this is what happened. Um, that's, this is not what we wanted. Well, I mean, it's what's happening. Um, then it's going to be this creature's turn. Which one are you? Oh, that one. All right, what does he want to do? He is going to move up. I can get, yeah, he can definitely get up to there. No, to I there. hate to say it, but we might need to leave Jimja and Bark behind. And he is going to make an attack with his short sword. <laughs> Ooh, 22 to hit. Hooray. Um, four. Five points of piercing damage. You're raging, so feel free to halve that if you want. But you don't. Me? Have to. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I won't half. Do I get inspiration if I don't half it? What? No. No, I'm not giving you inspiration for two points of damage. Get out of here. Um, nice try, but um, no. I, I like to yes and. I'll tell you what. Yes and. You also go unconscious and dying. That sound fair? Come on, man! I'm gonna die. You've gotta give me fucking <laughs> something before I kick it. Well, Please. You, gotta, you gotta earn it. Um. All right. So, then it's my other creature's turn. It is going to. Well, let's have a look here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's going to do. It is give me going a spicy to... little knuckle sandwich. A disembodied spectral weapon materializes behind you, Rash. Noise. Noise. It appears to be some type of long, elegant mace and it goes to crack you in the back. Nice. It does not get advantage because it's not flanking you. Not technically. So, let's have a look at this. Um, when you cast a spell, designate any number of creatures. Wait, that's not the right one. Um, that's the one. Uh, creature... No, that's not the one I want either. Can you actually show me? There we go. You create a spectral floating weapon that in within range that lasts for the duration or until you cast the spell again. When you cast the spell, you can make a melee attack. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier. So let's make a spell attack, uh, which is... Where are you? Sorry, I have to look these up on the uh, on the old stat block. That takes a while. Because Just I... need you to remember. Like, I'm not sure if we've announced that I'm doing this, but um, you are playing in a game of mine coming up very soon, and I am a very petty bitch. <laughs> well, look. Um... <laughs> Great you way just to doomed Rash to realise that, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> on the other hand, like, <laughs> I allow you to make the decisions. Um, so, uh, a 19 is going to be a hit for 1d8. 7 plus 5. 13 points of, uh, of bludgeoning damage. Is that halved? No, not bludgeoning oh, damage. Not bludgeoning Spiritual damage. weapon is force damage, force so it damage. is not so halved unless you happen to be a bear totem barbarian. No, a bear totem barbarian. You are okay, so it is halved. Good, thank you. Yeah. Force damage. How many points here. of damage is that? Hey. Um, what do I roll? A seven. So that will be twelve points of force damage. So six points of force damage. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, this is spicy, but it, it's not it's not quite chili peppers yet. Um <laughs> it, it's not looking great. 
But it's not looking awful either. She will fan out over to there. <laughs> um, alright. Let's skip that one. Go on to this one. Um, this one here. Sees the melee starting to kick off, but he's not going to attack Thrash. He's going to move 30 feet back to there. Attack um, Bark. <laughs> I think he's going to take a shot at Stranbalas, but it's still oh. going to be flat roll. It's going to be a flat roll here. Um, so. Um. It's a long. No, shot. he's not. He can't see him. Why not? He's 130 odd feet away, Drow. Oh, oh did I say Stranbalas? Yes. You did. Yep. I must have just seen his picture. What I meant was. He's taking Patch? a shot at Patch. Why okay. Say That's more it's like not it. Even remotely the same. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, no. the same yeah. height. He's he's going to take a shot at you um, with that. So let's have a look here. An 18 to hit. Does that hit? Just. Amazing. All right. So you're going to take seven points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a Constitution Ooh. saving throw. Please. Oops. Yep. Okay, so I'll Poison take arrow, three. I'll take three damage, and then Constitution saving throw. Five. Five on the con save. Uh, yeah, this might surprise you, but that's not going to be enough. You are going to be poisoned. Oh wait. Monster hold on. Out poison. Hold on. Ew. Condition or damage poison. Hold on. Um. Or be poisoned for one hour if the saving throw fails by five or more. The target is also unconscious. Oh, for fuck's sake! So, um, <laughs> you are poisoned and unconscious. Not going well for you guys. It's going to take um, something special to uh, to turn this around. Dran Ballas, luckily you're up next. Yeah, no pressure or nothing. Thanks for that. Um, right, uh, Dran Ballas would look across to Lady Verena quickly and say, this doesn't look very good. You know this one? Um, unfortunately not. No, I've never seen this being in my life, nor can I really see them now. Ben. I say we should hightail it back out of there. Can I use my inspiration to reroll that save? Um, hmm, hands off the chest, please. Hang on. You said that you'd give me that inspiration. If you needed it in a hear me out moment, but... It, I, you know, I do like, need it in a hear me out moment that has ceased to happen, presently. I'm conscious on the ground do in I, front of yeah, all I'll tell you what, do I have two players who want to use the, uh, that advantage card? Yeah? I think that sounds I mean, like a... Look, like a good old fashioned crit and miss roll off. No, no, no. I've, I've got my own inspiration that I was going to give to Thrash in a hear me out moment. I'm asking if I can instead use it to uh, hear me out and let me re-roll that save. <laughs> All right, fine. Roll that save. And still go, <laughs> watch, watch me fail it again. <laughs> oh, a 17. That's actually yeah. way better. Nice a success. Neither, you are neither poisoned yeah. nor unconscious, but you can feel <laughs> that you just saved on that by the very skin of your teeth. <laughs> oh dear. Oh As dear, you feel oh dear. a numbing sensation start to spread from the spot where the crossbow bolt just grazed you, you know that these bolts have been coated in some kind of poison. Um, Dran Ballas, it is now your turn. Sure. Um, after having that conversation with Lady Verena, he would say, uh, we'll have to help them for now. And he will use his action to dash. Action to um, dash. So he will move his, yep, 60 feet, normal movement 30. So he's doubling, going up to 60. Um, still got little baddie with him. Yep. Uh, once he gets to that point, he's going to, going to use his bonus action to cast Shield of Faith, uh, raising his AC by two. Two. All right. Um, yeah, he's going to cast it on himself. Yeah. 
And give yourself that concentration reminder, because that is a concentration spell, yeah. so if you take damage, you get to roll some more dice. Alright, end of your turn. Uh, action, bonus action, move action. So moving on to my next creature, which is that one over there. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to roll a d4 here. One, two, thrash. Three, four will be patch. And that is a three. So patch is coming towards you. He's going to move 30 feet to the shore, start scrambling up the rocky incline of the shore, and he is going to fire at you as well, with his hand crossbow. Um, 12 is going to be a miss, so this crossbow <laughs> flies right Ding. by your ear, or impacts with your shield, and you can see, as the crossbow bolt impacts with your shield, you can see a small fleck of this greenish-black liquid it gets ejected from the crossbow tip. And now is when things get really interesting. Uh oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do here? Mm. Going to... I don't like those noises. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm very worried for Bark right now. Yeah, me too. I think your dogger is going to need to say bye bye. Just a thought. <laughs> Prepare for the worst. She is going to... Um, I should have really looked at this more, but she's going to cast a spell. 300 feet, yeah, good, good, good. 300 feet, what? 300 yeah, feet. it's gonna hit me. Range. No, it's not gonna hit you. Uh, oh, good what I like to hear. Uh, let me read this correctly here so I know that I'm doing this right because I think at this point it's kind of important. 20 foot radius on here, 20 foot radius of here we'll go with um, yeah that'll do and circle. Oh fuck. That right there zonies. Catching both uh. Dran Balas, Dran Balas is familiar, and Patch in this. Now, what I need from you guys, as these uh. insects start to crawl up from the stonework beneath your feet, and they start swarming up your legs, and some of them start to take flight and fly around you, you can feel the stinging sensations as they start to bite you. I need a constitution saving throw from both Dran Balas, the bat, and patch. Do we need to roll the bats off mine, or? Well, how much uh, how much hit points does the bat have? One. Never mind, the bat's dead. <laughs> twenty-one. All right, twenty-one and nineteen. You both pass, so you are going to take uh, damage equal to. Oh, rolled pretty well there. 27, uh, half of 27, so 23 points of piercing damage as these insects crawl all over your body and begin you, you stinging mean, you. You mean 13? 13. Yes. That's what I said, yeah, 13. Which, uh, which, uh, you said 23. <laughs> wow, I'm really on it tonight. Uh, 13 yeah. points of, uh, of piercing damage as these insects crawl up your legs and start stinging you all over your body. And I need another constitution saving throw from Dran Balas to see if he can maintain his spell. Jeez, Fen, you know, you seem kind of out of it. Should we take a whole raid check thing on this TPK and maybe come back on the night when you're feeling a little bit better? <laughs> no, no, look, I'll just... I'll power on i i don't know how i'm going to manage but i will manage i do appreciate your um concern though it's okay oh, me fuck that's, off. um magical piercing damage isn't it uh it certainly is magical piercing damage do 20 for the win by the way yes so you continue concentrating on your spell uh no problem at all is this a persistent effect or is it a one-off I'll let you know. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this much. It's going to remain there. 
the area is difficult terrain. Um, and if you enter this area or end your turn there, you're going to take that damage again. Um, ooh, that's a. Yep. That's her action. So I'm sure she has something that she can do as a bonus action. Surely. Um, No, that's uh, that's going to be her turn, and then we're going to move on to Bark. Bark remains at her side, and Patch. Now that you're closer to them, you can see mm -hmm. that. Um, actually, let me just have a quick look here. No, it's fine. Um, you can see that Bark's eyes have rolled into the back of his head, and he's just sitting there. He's oh. not moving. Um, Jimja will roll a saving throw. Let's find out. I normally don't allow death saving throws for NPCs, but what the hell? He fails one. Hey, that's very kind of you. <laughs> um, and then we go to another creature. Let's just attack Thrash. No, I'll take it. Seven. Uh, so 11 to hit, that's a miss. And let's go to the next one. Where are you? You're down there. You are going to... How can you even get there? No, because he's moving through it. No, actually he's just stepping over the unconscious form of Jimja. So another attack on Rush with a short sword. 12 is a miss. So, moving on. Lady Verena, sorry um, it's taken so long. Yes? <laughs> I would, uh, sorry. You go. Um, does, does, do they have to roll an athletics check because they're stepping over an unconscious body? I'm grasping at straws here. <laughs> no, he's not technically stepping over the unconscious body. He's sort of fighting over the top of the unconscious body. He hasn't actually... Okay, so that seems like he would need to roll some sort of check because fighting over an unconscious body, I've heard, is very difficult. He is on an angle from you. He hasn't entered the square of Jinja's unconscious body. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say no on that one, unfortunately. But you know he's already taken his attack and missed, so he's not gonna miss any more than he's already missed. I was just hoping he'd fall over and took some fall damage, but okay. Moving on. First from that got you wouldn't pick. Desperate question, Marina. <laughs> um, I'm gonna move forward 30 feet. Yeah. This is reluctantly, I should say. Um, and I will then cast Firebolt on this guy over here. Alright, Firebolt. Uh, one of the drows. Away we go. And Firebolt is a ranged spell attack? Yes. Right. Uh, 19 to hit. Do we need to roll that with disadvantage? No. He's not in the Why? line. He's near enough to it. Technically, can't even see him. I'm going oh no, to you got 120 feet, you. right? No. Sorry. Yeah. So 60 no. feet of dark vision. Um, let's have a look here. 105 feet. You can see him. Sure, because he's on the other side of the light. But it's going to be with disadvantage, I'm afraid. Okay. That's fine. Uh, okay. Cool. That's... That's everything. Ooh, oh. Alright. Uh oh. And that, uh, that rounds out... Round one. Back to the top of the round. Patch. Hey, desperate, Grace. Desperate situation. The fuck idea you were talking about. What? You know that uh, running away idea you mentioned? Yes. Did you say that in character? Um, no, but I'm about to suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> see, the thing is, is that Patch is in a rage. You can see his buddy Bark is really in trouble. He can reach one of these guys. 
and you're there too. Like, unless we have a concerted, definite um, call to run, he's not going to. Well, so... if you turn to me and ask politely, you can have some speaking time included in your turn. If you suggest it, I will do it. Mm, I don't like Come on, that. dude. You, you are very, you've been passive this entire time. I think your discipline is much better than mine and you are far more able to break a rage to say something intelligible. Just a thought. Just a thought. This is the situation that we find ourselves in. Thrash is right in the midst of it. Um, and Patch, you are 45 feet away from Thrash. Dranvalis is... 35 feet to the north of Patch, and Verena is 30 feet to the northwest of Dranvalis, a full 110 feet away from the melee that's occurring on the beach here. Bark seems to have been ensorcelled somehow. Ensorcelled? You like that? Ensorcelled. That's a funny yeah. word. Um, ensorcelled. What are you going to do? Patch, you have the floor. Don't feel like you need to act as though Patch is completely out of his mind. Yeah. You make um, the decision that you want to make. Beer checks are normally wisdom saves, right? Yes. All right. Can you get me a DC in mind? I don't want to know what it is. I'm going to roll a wisdom save to see if Patch is um, like scared enough to run. By, by how, how d badly this is going, keeping in mind he is currently on... I have to take these hit points off again. 19 so hit points. Is over As being afraid and ever. under not being afraid? Um, no, over is, is not being afraid, under is being afraid. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to save against the fear effect. You can decide what the DC is. Oops, there we go. I got a 23. That's over. I'm not afraid. All right, then. Let the dice decide, because I couldn't. I'm going to charge straight at this guy. And um, bonus action, as I'm doing it, I'm going to activate my starry form. So I'll start glowing a little bit brighter. I'll get 10 feet of bright light and 10 feet of dim light. Um, just fix the aura. Yep, there we go. All right, and then um, my action, I will try and crack him in the face, the scarred one. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to position myself because I do have the movement next to the both of them so the other one can't try and shoot me again. Um, and then I'm going to try and crack the scarred one in the face with my Warhammer. Uh, where are you? Black. 14 to hit. I have a feeling that's not going to do anything. Uh, no, that's not going to be enough, unfortunately. Fuck. Oh. Okay. Uh, by the way, my starry form I activated was the archer. And that was my bonus action to do so. Okay. Uh, what does that give you, the archer? Um, for a bon bonus action, I can make a ranged spell attack for a d8 plus spellcasting more damage. Okay. It's handy it's when you're in melee range. Um... Well, yeah, look, I know it's going to be disadvantaged, but it is an extra attack every round. So. Okay. That's all I can really do. Move on up in there. Then it's his turn. Mm -hmm. He. attacks you. Um. With his short sword. He is mm -hmm. going to make. Attacks with a 13, which is a miss, and a natural 20. Oh, ah. <laughs> so, I can't even tell you how bad this is, but it's bad. Um, all right, so to start off with, we're gonna go crit damage with that. So you're gonna take nine points of piercing damage and. Oh. An additional. Oh, there we go. That's a nice roll. 26 points of poison damage. Are you dead? Mm hmm. Is that hard? Mm hmm. Because he's. Poison? No. Oh, okay. 
As the short sword finds... I hate my bear totem. An I keep thinking bear, yeah. In the plates of your bone-like armor, it pierces through between your ribs, and the poison travels directly into your heart, which beats, pushing oh, the poison into your body. You are unconscious and dying. Mm-hmm. And it's Thrash's turn. What do you want to do? Oh, about them back up, okay. Hang on. Let me just do some mathematical calculations, if you don't mind. <laughs> um. Can you carry Jim Jar and Patch? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's for fucking sure. Your Patch is about, like, you know, quite large and rather heavy. Okay. What do we have on the table? Advantage. Advantage. Mm -hmm. Um. Just so you know, Patch weighs 320, including his gear. You can carry Patch. You cannot carry Patch and Ginger. You could carry two Jim Jars. You can't carry Patch and Ginger. Could I carry, carry Patch and, and Bark? Can I carry Patch and Bark? Um, no. I, I, I total weight with all my gear is 386 pounds. Don't help him. Um, <laughs> shut up. So, um, he, he, like, here's what I would do, right? Grab Jim Jar, grab Bark, get the hell out of there. This, I mean. Um, Oh, we're having fun. Um, that is actually the best value for, for like, you know, you're saving two lives there. And you, you know just that, that... grab Bark. Okay, tell you what. Roll a perception check for me, Thrash. <laughs> okay. Um... I knew this was the that best would be a... Four, 15. 15? 15. 15 is enough. As this is all uh, like unfurling, man, I, can't, I can't remember how to talk anymore. As this is all happening around you, I imagine time almost slows down because of the adrenaline that's pumping through your body. And you take a moment to take in your surroundings, remembering the um, lessons that you were taught by the dwarves in your mercenary company. No matter what's happening, always be aware of your surroundings. You can see Rupapine is breathing. <clears throat> That's where I'll go. In case that okay. changes your decision. That definitely does not change my decision. He is worthless to me. He um... is good at healing. Thrash he is. Yes, but Thrash also sees her friend in trouble, and because Patch has taught her good and her alignment has changed, things have happened, and there's no way for me to stabilize or even bring back Purple Pin. Unless all of a sudden Thrash is a fucking cleric. Um, which she is Just not. Give him a little shove, he'll wake up. Oh, potion down the throat. Mm, mm, or I could do that to Patch, get him up, and then he could... Oh my god, why is this so motherfucking hard? Um... Yeah, I'm going for Patch. Sorry, guys. Hasta la vista. Uh, with something a little bit extra spicy for the viewers. This is far beyond the void. Oh, out of the abyss bullshit. Guys. This is out of the abyss bullshit. We are back to the same <laughs> bullshit we've been doing for the last year. Um, nah, so Thrash is going to run. I'll tell you what, are you trying to get out of this situation right now? Yes, yes, she is attempting to grab Patch and get the hell out of Dodge. Alright. Um,. I would say you can you can get over there, you can pick him up as part of your movement action, and then 
double time it out of there and we will go into more of a um, cinematic moment, so to speak. If that's what you want to do. Um, you are going to yeah. take some attacks of opportunity as you try and leave. Yeah? Done. All right. Done. I'll let's, take it. Yeah. Let's make those attacks of opportunity. Uh, one, two, three. This feels four. like, um, this feels very, um, deja vu -y for me, because this is exactly amongst Shadows and Stones, and, um, it's hurting my soul a little. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worked Shadows out pretty Stone well for me last time. First stream of 2022. This is our first stream of 2023, so. Natural 20 on the first attack of opportunity, so crit damage Fuck. for that one. So nine points, go ahead and halve that. Uh, second one. Ooh, that's a miss. Uh, that's an eight. And the third one. Oh, another eight. Getting lucky. And a 12. So three misses and one critical hit. You can pick up patch now tell me where you want to go and how far you, you could also um, just like um dump a healing potion in me so i can move of my own accord after this still drag me away but yeah yeah out. we'll get to that we just gotta get out first yeah um let's okay if i double timed it out i could probably get to like here ish carrying me will halve your movement we're going into cinematic mode. It, yeah, oh, yeah it's pretty. Yeah. yeah, I'll just get enough so that sort of past Drabalus, they can see I'm heading. Um, as I'm sort of dragging um, Patch, I'll just sort of be like, guys, I think we're going to cut our losses here. Um, out. And yep. run for the door. Um, and as you're leaving with Patch hyped up over your shoulder in a fireman's run, you hear this woman call out behind you, Don't just stand there, catch them! Bring her back! Bring her back! Almost with a sense of emergency in her voice. Desperation, almost. And they start chasing you. Dran Balas, Verena, you see... Thrash heading towards you. Oh, Trent Ballas! Yes! Fog cloud. Um, it's your time to shine, buddy. It's your time to yeah. shine. Patch, totally. What do you want to do? Patch? Am I conscious? Have so I been given a health Fireman carrying Patch. Dran Ballas, what would you like to do? Or Verena? Uh, yeah, so as they're running away, as soon as they clear um, basically that first. <laughs> Or, or enough range, um, Dran Balas would be casting Fog Cloud so that they can have a, an escape without being, I guess, seen very well. Okay, alright, alright, I dig it. Um, and he'd be, he'd be saying, get out of there, you fools! I'm going to get take to move out of insects. some shots at you guys. Um, I'm assuming, Dran Ballas, you take a step out of that area. Um, yes. And I'm going to get them to fire at Thrash as she's falling back. Um, uh, so uh, let's do this is gonna hurt. Um, now they... Can I ask a quick yes. question, you Sven? May. Yes. That necklace, was it being worn? She dropped it. Uh, yeah, it's on she the dropped it? Yep. Okay. Is there any chance I could take this time to move towards them and cast Catapult on the necklace and fly it towards us? In the DM. Um, hey, hey thanks for the raid, guys. Meeples oh, and Dragons. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hey. Raided us. Meeples and Dragons, thank you very much, guys. Love your work, by the way. You guys do great streams. Um, Hell yeah, dude! I tell you what, I need actually. Thrash, do you have inspiration? Ah, uh, no, I used it on Mark. I do, though. Well, I want. You know what? 
I'll take away your advantage cards that's on the table at the moment. And I'm doing that mm -hmm. because I'm allowing you to flee from this combat in a way that otherwise would not be available for you to do so. Does that sound fair? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to take that card away. Um, yes. What happened to the necklace? Verena, you may cast yep. that spell. Talk to me about Catapult. Okay, so I have to be within 60 feet of the object. Um, but I can choose one object weighing between 1 to 5 pounds within range that isn't being worn or carried. The object flies in a straight line up to 60 feet in a direction I choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts against a solid surface. Alright, so you're basically force pulling this thing towards you like a uh. lightsaber that you just threw. As this fog yeah. cloud begins to materialize in between you and them, but they are going to get an opportunity to fire some crossbow bolts at Thrash as she runs into this fog cloud. Nice. Um, so let's go ahead, let's make a few of those. A 18 is a hit, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is a hit, for All sure. Alright. Um, so, four points of piercing damage. I need you to make a constitution Two. saving throw. This is where it's gonna get ever so slightly spicy, guys, because I am bad at constitution. She's not very conable. Yep, that is nine. Nine. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm a. I'm gonna pass out, aren't I? I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Bad news is you are poisoned. Good news is you did not uh, fail to save by five or more, so you are not unconscious. Yay! You begin to stagger. I'll take it. But there's two more attacks coming your way. First one. Could be Fifteen to hit. Okay, that that does in fact hit. Oh, are we doing meets it beats it? Please tell me we're not doing meets it beats it. I know that's the rule. Like that's how it works. All right, okay. So that's a hit. Okay. Yeah. Does does a, does, a, does the fact that there's a great big armored fucking furball hanging over a back come into effect? Yeah, at can all? can, can pass take, take it in the ass. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm going to roll. Um, uh, what do I need to roll here? Mm -hmm. A d a d four. Uh, evens right. it's thrash. Odds it's patch. We'll just do one, two, thrash. Three, four will be patch. Yeah. So four. Um, so. Patch, you take uh, a crossbow bolt, so go ahead and knock off. Does it um, ping off my armor since I have much higher AC than Patch? No. No, yeah. Alright. You take off I've a totally save. got that. Failed save? Totally. Yep, yeah, oops, not a success. Failed save. Yep, cool. Valiant's here too. G'day, Valiant. Alright, now oh, I'm going hey, to. Hey, thanks for our character hey, art, buddy. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. We it's love awesome it. Us. Those people We might all dive, but. <laughs> <laughs> Valiant is the one who did our character art for those people in the chat. Make sure you check them out on Instagram at DD Valiant Odyssey. Um, Alright, back to my TBK. Uh, let's roll another attack. <laughs> right. Just casually. 12. That's not going to be a hit, but I guess I should see no. who it's going to hit first. One. So that's just going to be a miss. So misses you, yeah. Crash. You make your way into the fog clouds. Now you can't see what's going on. Marina. The necklace on the floor starts to shake yep. for a second. And your doppelganger dives down to the ground to grab it. But it shoots out of her hand as she goes to grab it and flies towards you. I need a... Can I assist? Can we go with intelligence at all? Because I know exactly where it's going because it's my spell. You're going to try and calculate exactly its trajectory? Fine. Yes. Use your intelligence. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, nice. Just an intelligence check, saving throw, what's the go? Um, Just make a check. Check? Cool. Oh, sure. It's a 19. A 19? Ooh. You catch it midair. Nice. Awesome. I'm bolting Brad. it out of here. Alright. Run away! Run away! Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Patch Thrash, you are in the fog clouds. 
Mm -hmm. um, let's see what happens here. They're going to give chase. Um, but I imagine that spell is still active. So unless you've moved around it, have you tried to move around it or are you trying to move through it? Well, from where we were, it. from where I was, I we could have gone straight up past the edge of it and then diverted across to the door a little bit. That would probably be the, the best bet. But I'm unconscious, so it's entirely up to Thrash. Thrash? Yeah, no, we're moving around it. She'd move around it. All She's right. smart. Ish. Yeah. And, and if you want to, at some point through this process, like, dunk a healing potion on me and put me on my feet so I can run myself so that you're not... Mate, you know, that is the last of what you. I'm thinking about. I will yeah. dunk a healing potion in you when we get to the portal. Okay. Thrash, you're in the yeah. cloud. But yeah. You're moving, you have touch over your shoulder. He's heavy, he's very heavy. Sweat drips from your brow as you're moving through the smoke. <laughs> Thanks, Valiant. Valiant just bought me a healing potion. You flash back. Take fine. <laughs> Sorry. To your childhood, to that traumatic moment. You're oh, disoriented no. in the smoke. Um, with the adrenaline pumping through your veins, you sort of lost your sense of direction. You're looking around when all of a sudden you feel a hand on your opposite shoulder. You whirl around to see the scarred visage of the Drow veteran warrior who just laid a patch out in basically a single turn. Mm. And you look directly into his eyes and you go back to that moment. stuff. Um, one moment. You whirl around and all of a sudden you're back when you were a child. When you were being carried out of the burning building by your mother. In much the same way as you're carrying Patch through this fog cloud. And um, see you being carried over your mother's shoulder as she carries you through the burning cottage. The sound of crashing timber flames, grunts of exertion, echo from down the hall. Thrash's mother turns into the kitchen as she stops suddenly. And Thrash, even as a child, you remember feeling that sharp intake of air as she stops. Sensing your mother's fear, you turn your head in her arms and you can see a drow man standing there, hand crossbow drawn and aimed at your mother. And there's a long, nerve-wrenching moment as he stands there. Um, there's another crash that echoes from somewhere deeper in the cavern as the roof starts to give way to the growing flames and the drow's man's eyes drift towards a small window in the kitchen just big enough for Thrash to fit through and we see the drow man as he locks eyes again with Thrash's mother he nods almost imperceptibly towards the window never taking his aim away from her and she slowly carefully inches towards the window, expecting to hear the twang of a crossbow announcing her death at any moment. She leans over, kisses Thrash on the forehead, oh. before lowering her through the window, when suddenly her eyes go wide. Thrash drops down to the ground. Thrash, you are transported back present day and you see those same eyes and the drow that's standing before you now and suddenly it starts to make sense. The scarring is uh, scars from burns 
and amazing those are the same eyes that you looked into as a child now standing in the swirling fog hand crossbow drawn and aimed at you there's a tense moment as you wait for that same twang of the crossbow bolt but it doesn't come he nods almost imperceptibly towards the north and you make your way out the fog cloud joining the rest of your companions you make your way back towards the ziggurat with the drow in hot pursuit you get there i'm assuming you slam the door behind you no i leave it open for them please come inside and fuck us up they take <laughs> off their shoes before they come inside because they don't want to be rude no <laughs> I'm traumatized. Well, we're going to end tonight's episode, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week.